Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media broadcast of the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. We are here at the Bossier Civic Center in Minden, Louisiana. I'm PJ Riley, sitting alongside Darren Christenberry. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Darren, we're here for our second year at Camp Minden. It's a great facility. This is actually my first time here. I oh, there I, you go. I didn't get to make it last year. <laughs> we had a we had a death in the family, so I couldn't make it last year. So this is my first trip. Kind of dipped my toes in the water for the surrounding city, uh, the event site. And if you watch the weather, you in the past we've had tournaments where we shot one day and then couldn't shoot the second. Everybody got 200 points. There you go for the weekend. And based on the forecast, I really thought that's what this weekend was going to be. Shoot yeah. the first day, try to kill it. Everybody gets 200 points. But fortunately, we didn't get a lot of rain today. Everybody, everybody got 40 arrows in. So we're ready to watch some shoot-offs. We did not. Folks, this is the ASA, Archery Shooters Association, and this is the Delta McKenzie Pro-Am Tour. This is the third stop here at Camp Minden, Louisiana. There you can see our tour schedule where we have been already. Easton Hoyt, Camp Minden, Louisiana. We have yes, yet to go. True Ball in London, Kentucky. Matthews Pro-Am in Metropolis, Illinois. We're going to end up at the McKenzie Classic in Coleman, Alabama. Uh, that's in uh, August there. So, but what we're going to do here, we have our pro pressure point shoot downs. That's where we are competing today at Bossier Civic Center. And so we first up, the first division we're going to see here is the women's known pro division. That is one of our two new divisions. And Darren, there we see our leaderboard. What are we looking at? Yeah, no, not a strange name at the top. Paige Pierce with a 432, and she shot 16 bonus rings, so she had no blemishes on her scorecard. She shot, six, excuse me, 16 12s for 32 up. Danelle Lutz at 426, Tanya Guillotine 424, Cassidy Cox and Caitlin Boardwell are tied at 422. So these scores are bunched up a little more than we've seen. Yeah. This should be a really good shoot off. We are certainly looking forward to it. And Darren, we are going to go to the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks, and he is going to bring out our archers. Welcome, everyone. We're going to get this kicked off and started here this afternoon. We are here at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am, and we'd like to welcome everyone. The Women's Known Pro Division is up first. And we're going to slow down just a little bit. <laughs> I trust everyone so far has had a good weekend, maybe not extremely wet. All right, so well, Darren, while we get the archers sorted out here, let's tell folks at home what we're doing. Yeah. What were the, let's lay the, give them the lay of the land. We have been outside in the sunshine, in the heat, in the rain. We've shot 20 arrows on Friday. We shot 20 arrows today for a 40 target round. 400 points is even par. If you shot 40 tens, you get 400 points. If you hit bonus rings, you get the up score. So Paige is at a 432. Now we go to the pressure point shoot down. The top five shooters from each division are going to shoot five or six additional arrows to see who comes out on top. All right, that's our first archer, Katie Boardwell. And in fourth place from Albuquerque, New Mexico, shooting for PSE, Cassidy Cox. Your third place qualifier from Winchester, Kentucky, shooting for Darton, Miss Tanya Gillantine. And in second place, from Montello, Wisconsin, also shooting for Darton, Danielle Lutz. And your number one qualifier, from Red Bluff, California, a stag hunting machine, shooting for Botech, Paige Pierce. So this is the lay that, you know, we've got five targets sitting out here. This is 3D archery. We're shooting foam animals with scoring rings in them. We've got an antelope is our target one at 33 yards. 
Pavelina at 39 yards, Black Buck 45 yards, Hyena 35 yards, and a Wolf at 28 yards. Yeah, and we can we can note too, you can see the ladies when the camera hits out there, they have an orange cone behind their shooting box. If it stays behind the shooting box, the low 12's always in play. If they pick that cone up and place it in front of them, that means they're calling the upper 12. They have the option to shoot either. The low 12's always in play, but if they want to shoot that upper, they place that orange cone out in front, so there's no question which one they're shooting at. Right, and those plaques we were just looking at, that's the one of the awards that they're gonna get with the alligator heads on it. But there's Katie Borgwell. Yeah, Katie and her family have a shop in Tully, New York, and Katie knows what she's doing with the bow and arrow. She's a little bit high right there, but I expect this to be a really good shoot down. The scores are pretty tight. That might be Cassidy's arrow there. Just high right of that 12. There's Donnell. Good strong shot. Just underneath of it there. Okay, first up, Paige Pierce currently leading by. All right, we're going to go to our scoring here. You'll see these rings that we've been talking about. There's Paige. Nathan mentioned she was a stag killing machine. She just got back from New Zealand and killed what was it, a 508 inch stag? Something crazy. A 10 for Paige ten right there to first start. Target. As you mentioned, par. 10, par. ten is ten, par. Yeah, ten, ten, is, 10 is good. So when we come to this javelina here, there you see that ring just above her arrow. If she had called upper, that would be a 12. The lower ring is always a play. That center one is 10 points. That's not a special ring. She takes a 10, Danelle. Moves her to a 436. It'll get a little more complicated when they change positions. <laughs> That's Tanya Galantine there on just that. Just tall. On that black buck. She does have 16 bonus rings coming off the initial round. Puts her to 432. This is different. We've been shooting outside. Yesterday was sunny and awesome. Today was overcast and drizzly all day long. And then you come into artificial lighting. It's not the same. It's just not yeah. the same. That's a 10 for Cassidy. Who's her 432? Yeah, uh, Paige was talking about how that really, she really struggles with that coming indoors because she works so hard to get her set up right for yes. outdoors. There's a heat for Katie as well, putting her at a 430. I don't know what it is, but it's when I've been in shoot-offs indoors, to me, and, and I judge, I've shot judging classes my whole career, but to step on the line and to look at those targets, they look a mile. <laughs> they do, they just, something about indoors makes things look farther. Now, these ladies are using a range finder because this is women's known pro, so they know the distance. Yep. But again, you saw some arrows a little high, a little right. It's the lighting, it's just different in here. Yeah, we'll get a shot of what they're looking through. The sight right there, that scope on the front of her bow, there is a lens in there that's magnifying. Mm -hmm. And then back in her bow string, what comes right up against her eye, peep sight, there's likely another lens in there called a clarifier meant to make that lens clearer. Mm -hmm. So all of that with light and, you know, things can start to starburst and it can just cause problems. And if you prepare, as you mentioned, for that sunlight, and then yeah. you come in here. Yeah, and if you could see that little red light that was blinking on the side of Tanya's bow, that means her battery's almost dead in oh. her sight light. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's an LP sight light, and when that red light blinks, that means your battery's about dead. Good look at Paige. She holds so steady. Paige, of course. Barely it's moving. Drop that right in the 12 that ring. There. That's an awesome shot. That is a 12 on that lower side there. Paige, of course, has won our first two events that we've had so far and comes in leading this one. But we're going to start off with Katie Boardwell on the first antelope. Uh, and oh, so that's a that 14 ring out she there. She went at it, yeah. That's a, that's a high risk reward shot, and she went after 14 points and got an eight. In the fifth position, that's a good play. Sure. 438 now for Katie. Yeah, miss there is going to be eight points, and you're real close to a five. Mm -hmm. But Paige that found the 12. That is definitely 12. 12 points for her. Put her at a 454. When the camera was behind Paige, you could see the arc of her arrow as it left her bow. 
she yeah. shoots. Yeah. Since there's no distance, speed's really not an issue for the for the guys and gals that judge. They want to shoot as close to the max speed as they can because if they misjudge a little bit, that arrow speed will help make up the difference in an error. Paige has exact dead marks, and you can watch her arrow kind of lob. She's not shooting a fast setup. It's just built for accuracy. That was a 10 for Danelle Lutz on that black buck. For Tyler Dante, current holder of that second 16 bonus race. And wow. There's a 14. There you go. That's nice. Good for Tanya. 14. 446. So she's tied for second right Moved now. Moved right into second. Mm -hmm. Now, Darren, our next archer is Cassidy Cox. And she smoked that 12 she's there. Dead. Cassidy's a World Cup shooter. She shoots a lot of, that's where I know her from, is the FIDA tournaments, the 50-yard, 50-meter me, events, and I believe she just shot in Turkey, did she not? With Danelle Lutz. With Danelle. Danelle and Cassidy, both for Team USA, captured the Team Women's Compound gold medal yes, at I the knew World they, Cup. I knew they had some success there. Just last week. So, and it's great to see the archers of that discipline because it's very different. Oh, it's yeah. static 50 meters shooting a typical bullseye that folks are used to seeing and now coming out here to 3D. Yeah, it's great to see the crossover, you know, and that's, uh, that's what I like about this. You know, at home you can look on TV and be like, oh, well, they missed that ring and they knew how far it was. These are world-class archers, and, <laughs> and there's no dot really to aim at down there. So it, when someone comes in with a really big score or they've shot a ton of bonus rings, Hats off to them. I have yeah. mad respect for these archers, all the archers out here. There's just a really great talent pool to pull from, and you've got some really heavy hitters out here. Absolutely. So we're coming up to the third arrow now. Yeah, from where they're standing, if they can see a line, it's a very slight look mm -hmm. at it because it just blends into the target. Now, I know at one time Paige was shooting big power. She shot like an eight power lens. Now, it, it magnifies it quite a bit. You might be able to see the arc of the arrows yep. right here. So, we have a That's special. That's a good look. Yep. That's a really neat look. So, that is Paige, Danell, and Tanya in order. Yeah, Danell did call targets. up her. You can see the cone out in front of her there on number four, and she hit the upper on that hyena. Paige is low in an eight. Tanya did not shoot yet, but she's on that wolf on the right side. She r she's glassing hard. I'm guessing she's going to try to 14 this thing. Oh. She did, and she went Just high. Went high. Mm. When they take a little extra time to glass it, they're really trying to find what to aim off of, whether it be the crease, the core, you know, yeah. an inch or two down from the back. It's a little harder to aim at. Cassidy Cox. Cassidy Cox with a 10. So we're yeah, going to see a little mix-up here, maybe. Yeah, I think so. 454 for Cassidy is by my math. This is her first uh, professional shoot down here in the ASA. This is her first time here. That's a good 10 for Katie. 448 now, I think. So look at Paige. Paige. She's a rock star. She got an eight right there. She won't like that, but. Yeah, it's going to be an eight, four, sixty-two. Eight. Page has such a good social media presence, too. I, I, it's got to be a full-time job, as busy, <laughs> as many followers as she has and as active as she is. If you don't know Paige and you do like archery, follow her and, yes. and watch her stuff. She's She's got a really good platform. That was called by Danelle Lutz. Upper 12 is obtained. The perfect 12 for Danelle. 4, 4 58. Now, at the very end of tonight's broadcast, we're going to see Danelle's husband, Jimmy Lutz, in the known pro oh, division. nice. I hadn't even looked at the names on that yet. Yep. He will be out here as well. Sure enough. She's been, she's been training him pretty good, it sounds like. Then. <laughs> Damn, you just went high there. She's been working with him, I guess. And let's look at it. So, Paige Pierce, now the four sixty. Jimmy's a world champion. He yes. shoots the feet of stuff, yeah, shoots really good at everything, and that's what I love about some of these archers. Every game they play, they excel at, and that's really someone that can play every game and be in the mix, that's such a – That's that, hard. Uh, it is. It is hard. It's hard <laughs> to be really great at all of them. It's really easy to be mediocre at everything. <laughs> so when you find these archers that are in the mix at every – 
type of archery. It's hats off to him. That's that's mad respect for that. There you saw Danelle. What she was doing was twisting a mount on her sight, and that lowers or raises her scope to get it. So she's aiming directly at what she wants to hit at whatever distance. Mm -hmm. She's on the wolf here, which is 28 yards. All right, ladies. She might go gunning for that. 14 there, 28 now. yards. She's four points behind Paige, and this is probably the closest target she will shoot yep. in, the f in these final five right now. So she may, if she wants to try to close that gap, go for that. Shooting that darting bow there. Oh, she went upper. I can't see that's her cone. That's really close. I'd say she probably yeah. called it, and that's really close. I would imagine. If you've seen the broadcast in the past, there's a good look at Cassidy over the shoulder. What? So yeah. Yeah, wow, look that's at that nice. arc. Yeah, that's nice. But we talk about pull the line. You know, regardless of what that foam is doing, it has to touch the line. Yep. Tammy got Tanya. a 14. She missed the last one. She didn't miss this one. 465. She's sure making a run at it, isn't she? And Tanya is another world class. Archer mm -hmm. shoots all over the world. 900s at Vegas. Vegas champ this year. Yep. 10 for Cassidy. 464. And we will mention, we talked about the, the shoot-off format here. They're going to shoot five arrows, one from each station. Right. If there's anybody within 10 points of the leader after those five, they'll shoot a sixth and final arrow, the last chance sixth and final arrow. So there's those lines, Darren. Yeah. They're not real even. That's a 12. You know, the lines move with the arrows because it's foam. It's not like paper where you just cut it. Yeah. They Ka can move. Katie called that upper and hit that upper on a 45-yard black buck. So she just, she just hit a ring she can barely see that's about the size of a 50-cent piece at 45 yards. <laughs> Paige just crushed that one. Puts her to 474 now. They hit some rings that round. And Danelle, I think she's going to get this one. Yes, she's in that line. Yep. 12 for Danelle. 470. 70. Still, All right. still four points. So A lot of rings in that round. Yeah, we have. There we go. We've come right back into order as yep. they're listed. Yeah, back to the original order with just four points between first and second now. So right now, there would be four people in the final arrow. Cassidy's within 10 points of the leader. Tanya's within nine points. Danelle's within four. And obviously, Paige would get the last arrow. So this is a big arrow right here. Cast, or Caitlin's going to have to shoot a 14 yeah. to have a chance to shoot the final arrow. And she's shooting a 35-yard hyena. Mm -hmm. But if Paige hits a ring, it won't matter. Yeah. There's, it'll be right. out of Katie's control. But I think it's the worst she can finish is fifth. Let's just go for it, Katie. All right. There's Tanya. She shoots so good. Her her indoor game is like, I call her a beast. I was like, you're a beast, <laughs> and that's 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 a, a major compliment to how good she is. Focused. Look at those eyes. Boom. Oh, mm, just maybe, tall maybe for her. Maybe a ten. Just center 10. 10. So if Katie hits a 14, she could shoot the final arrow maybe. We'll find out shortly. That center ring Paige's hit, that's not worth any extra points. That's There's just a 10. Good, look, good look at Danelle over her shoulder. That's a good camera angle, and she smoked it. <laughs> Crushed it. <laughs> that's perfect, guys. Inside out. That's going to be a... <laughs> that's going to be a 482 for Danelle. So she, she, that's two points now for the, this is going to get good. Coming over to Tanya. Just Ooh, see how close ball. that is? That's, oh, that's super close. We'll let them call that. They have a better look than I do, but that's close. 
I think it's a tin, I That's think. That's the tin ring that she's flirting with. That's Scott Parrott. It is. Our head yeah. judge there. 475 for Tanya. We'll see it more so with some of the guys shooting the heavier arrows, but mm -hmm. if he, uh, there was some there where the line was bending because of the arrow. All it has to do is touch the arrow. 472. Yeah, the girls would shoot bigger diameter, but they're trying to achieve a certain speed out here, and a lot of times the bigger diameters means they're heavier, and sometimes the heavier arrows make their bows so slow they have such a wide sight tape that it's probably a more critical setup for them. So you'll see them, see them shooting 23 diameters typically is be, be the biggest they shoot. Eight for Katie. Eight for Katie. Four, six, eight. And Miss Page. Center 10. Mm -hmm. 484. So that's going to knock out Cassidy and Katie Porter. Yep. yep, we're going to have three. Tanya's going to shoot first. She's nine points behind Page. Danelle will shoot second. She's only two points behind Paige now, so Paige will know exactly what she has to do. So far, so good. Yep, so Cassidy's going to finish. Cassidy Cox is going to finish in fourth place. Katie Boardwell will finish in fifth. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to them on a great weekend. Because there was a lot of good competition on that range out there. There were 17 in our women's known pro division. It's a the new division. This is their first year. So to have 17, they've been hanging around that number for all three tournaments. That's pretty good because this is the first year. First year we've it, had it. It is good because we've, we've had some behind-the-scenes chatter because of Paige's dominance, really. You know, she has she shot so good, and she shoots really good, and she won the last one by a pretty big margin. Yeah. And we've had some behind-the-scenes conversation of, will that affect the attendance in that class? Will people be like, well, we just can't beat Paige. Why would yeah. we shoot? You know, this obviously, you know, this weekend's a much more competitive weekend from top to bottom out there in that shoot-off. So, yes, I, you know, don't, I, be, don't be afraid to jump in. No, I talked to some of the ladies who she competes against, and they were, and I asked them, you know, does this discourage you? And they all, every one of them said, no, yeah. we want to catch her. It probably <laughs> motivates them. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we've had those conversations, and I was curious how everybody was feeling about it, and that's really good that they have that, yeah. have that approach. And, and. You know, Paige is as supportive as anybody. If one of them beats her, she'll be right oh, there to yeah. shake their hand and say, way to go. Mm -hmm. So now, again, we said anybody within 10 points of the leader, we're going to shoot the sixth arrow. Scott has told them, here's your, here's your position. Yep. We brought out the large deer. Oh, they did bring out a target. Yep. Okay, good. I see it. It's the last chance, last arrow. So Tanya is nine points behind the leader. The worst she's going to finish is third. If I could predict the future, I would say <laughs> she'll shoot at a 14. <laughs> and, Darren, we should mention, you know, there are thousands of dollars yes. on the line here for these professional yes, divisions. Yes, there are. I think with all classes throughout the ASA this weekend, pro and amateur, it's a, a few hundred thousand yes. dollars that everyone shoots for. But these ladies and gentlemen in the pro classes, if they get in first, second, or third, they get contingency checks from all their sponsors. Uh, some of them are negotiated higher than others, um, and that's just a, a benefit if you make that there. So, uh, yeah, if Paige wins, she gets a bunch of money. Yes. There's Tanya. Good look at that target down there. So that's a thumb button release she's using mm -hmm. here, Darren. Thumb yeah. activated. Tell them how that works. Yeah, it's got, you have a cocking mechanism on it, and then you'll see her wrap her thumb right there on that trigger. That gold thing's the trigger. Now she's going to pull or keep adding tension until it fires. I don't see her air. Oh, there oh, it is. Just went tall. Yeah, just tall. She did shoot the 14. She's been consistently oh, tall, so mm -hmm. something was off. In her setup, yeah. And you'll see some people shoot a hinge or a back tension is what we call it. Mm -hmm. Tanya was shooting a thumb trigger. It's activated by a thumb button, a button, and the hinges are uh, leverage. You're you're transferring from your index finger to your second, third finger, and it rotates on a moon until it slips off the moon, fires. I'm not sure what Danelle shoots. I think she shoots a hinge. 
She might be shooting like a, a true ball go. Nope, she's nope. shooting a true hinge. Okay, so this is what you were just talking mm -hmm. about. There's no actual trigger on mm -hmm. this. She has to rotate that release. And what they're going for is the surprise shot. Yeah. You know, when if you anticipate it, you're probably going to flinch. Yeah. And there are some people that about have that mastered the finishing, the the you know they call it punching. I don't. Some of them aren't <laughs> punching it, but they're finishing the shot. But her husband is the master. The master. Of it. <laughs> yeah. If we stay, if you if we stay tight on the nail, you can watch her fingers rotate this and release, really and really all really she's really doing is aiming. She's like, this is where I want to put my pin. I'm covering on the spot I want my arrow to hit, and she's just pulling nice and slow and steady until that release fires. Watch your fingers. She's going to take her thumb off that peg, and now she's just going to start transferring that energy. See it rotating slowly, and then it's going to fire. Boom. Oh, Smoke. There we go. That's huge. <laughs> that is huge right there. So she went so, to 496. Paige has to shoot a 12 to, to tie. Shoot a 12. Or 14 to win. That was huge. And wow. she... <laughs> I don't know what the bonus ring count is, but Paige only had her by one. That is awesome. Here we go. Paige, real simple. 12, yeah. At 12, we shoot one more error. A 14, it's over. Anything short of a 12, it's over. She has and to shoot the 14. Oh, so okay. Da so Danielle, Danielle yeah. has one more bonus ring right now than Paige does. So if Paige hits the 12, Danielle would win. No, even Paige, they would, would be tied all the way across. She'd get one more bonus ring. Oh, right, ring, right, right. right. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. You're so correct. She has You're to correct. Shoot. If she wants to win it outright, shoot the 14, shoot 14 now. If she wants to have another chance, shoot at the 12, and then you'd be tied and shoot off again. So I'm guessing she's going to try to 14. Yeah. And she's got an arrow hole. Look at those holes down there by that 14. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, I oh, think she man, got it. I, I think she did. That's why she's so tough right there. That's high, a high-pressure shot High right pressure. There. I was just going to say, high-pressure situation. Who can withstand it? And, I mean, <laughs> you can see the sigh of relief, there and it go. is, no doubt. Got it. No doubt. Wow. Big, you big bully, Paige. <laughs> Danelle just, she about won that. <laughs> 498 points. Wow. So, yeah, Danielle Lutz is going to be in second, and Tanya Galantin is going to finish in third. Great shoot down That there. was good. That was good. Danielle did everything she could do right there, and Paige <laughs> still came, found a way to hit that 14. Paige is going to come over here, and we're going to get a couple words from her. I want to ask her about that. Because she looks cool, but I'll bet she says that she was nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. All right, so there is Paige on the headset there. Paige, 14, you needed it to win. How did you feel taking that shot? Um, honestly, I didn't come here to tie, and I knew I didn't <laughs> want second. So I knew as soon as she hit that, I was like, I think we're tied on bonus rings. Like, I'm going to need it. So pretty much in my mind, if I missed it, she deserved it. And I'm, I mean, I'm obviously happy my arrow hit, but it was nerve-wracking. <laughs> I, I said you're a big bully. You're a big bully. <laughs> Danelle shot her butt off, and, I mean, she put the pressure on right there. But I said, while you're one of the best there is, you handled it and smoked it. And all I can say is congratulations again. Thank you, guys. That was uh, – a rough one, but I think there's a lot more of that to come, like with our class and our division. And this is only our third shoot down, and you can see the progress that we've made from here to from number one. So I'm pretty excited for us. I think these are going to get more exciting as time goes on. Great. Three, three for three, Paige. Congratulations <laughs> on another one. Thank you, guys. Great job.
Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. shoot down Sharon Wallace your first place qualifier Jeff Rainey your number one qualifier Miss Cara Kelly Mr. Levi Morgan that's Mr. McCarthy world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving, wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am here in Minden, Louisiana. We are at the Bossier Civic Center. Next up, Darren Christianberry, we have Senior Known Pro. There is our leaderboard. Yeah, there's a few names on this list I'm not super familiar with, so I'm looking forward to watching this to see what's going on. We got Vincent Grimm at a 434, Mr. Gillingham. Everybody knows Tim. He's at 428. Anthony Smith, 424. Randy Morocco at 422. Chuck Dernal at 420. It's 14 points from top to bottom, so it's a little little bigger gap but with the 14 ring in play who knows you guys just saw what can happen <laughs> anything can happen all right let's get to Nathan Brooks who's going to bring out our archers all right for our next event tonight it's going to be your senior known pro class your fifth place qualifier from Jeff Jeffersonville Georgia shooting for Hoyt Chuck Durnell And in fourth place, from Austintown, Ohio, shooting for Matthews, no stranger to this circle, Randy Morocco. <laughs> and in third place, from Florence, Alabama, shooting for Darton, Anthony Smith. Your second place qualifier for the known pro, the senior known pro division from Provo, Utah, standing at six foot six, shooting for Botech, Tim Gillingham. 
And your number one qualifier from Bronson, Florida, shooting for PSE and gold tip, Mr. Vincent Grimm. All right, Darren, so that is our field there. Of course, we have Randy Morocco, who has won the, who won the first two mm -hmm. uh, ASAs oh, this oh. year. Of course, Tim Gillingham, but then Chuck Dernal, Anthony Smith, and Vincent Grimm, first timers in our pro pressure point shoot. Yeah, that's why I say I recognize the faces, but I don't know a lot about these guys. I don't know their backgrounds or, you know, did they shoot? You know what classes they shot before how long we've been in archery so that's that's a lot of a new information that we'll find out maybe we have on their cards here but it's good to see new faces out there for sure yeah so it's uh this should be good it should be really good tim's only four points behind the lead i've said before he's a different kind of aggressive so he's not here for second place so this should be a fun one to watch <laughs> there's a good look at randy as they said he's won the first two but he's back in the mix again to try to make it three in a row and Randy is on a streak that goes back. He won four last year and then won the first two this year. Wow. That was in the senior uh, known 50. It wasn't a pro class, but. Well, he called upper and he hit it. There's a good look at Chuck Nernal from Georgia. Chuck runs an archery shop. I think, I can't see Chuck's comb, but position one, two, okay. three, and four all Our shot at uppers. I'm, I, I have yet to figure this Vincent upper game out myself Green personally, Green. so. I, I wonder, because I think it's harder to aim at the upper than it is at the lower for me personally. Ten. That's Vincent Grimm. I'm going to ten. I'm gonna have to ask that question. Why does everybody <laughs> prefer the upper, especially in known? Next up, I guess if they fall low, maybe that no keeps them in the ten range. Keeps them in the it's ten. A, it's yeah. a safety mode, maybe. Tim, Tim well, certainly yeah. knows where they are. Yeah, so Tim's closed the gap. Two four forty. We're coming around to Anthony Smith here. He is a home builder and does roofing as well. Okay. There you and go. he actually came up in the unknown game. Very good. Shot open C, B, A, semi pro, then went to known pro, or excuse me, known fifty. I knew you'd have the lowdown on all that. There's Randy. Anthony had a 10, by the way. Oh. Randy got a 12, so he moves into a tie for third. I think I said earlier that Tim was only four points behind the leader. I, I, I made a mistake there. He's actually six points behind. Now he's four points behind yep. with that 12 that he shot. Good solid 10 there for Chuck. 10 for Chuck Puts Grinnell. him to a 430. And yeah, look at the scoreboard real quick. Vincent now is a 444. Yes, yeah, so Chuck runs the archery shop, full draw addiction there in Georgia. Okay. Jeffersonville, Jeffersonville, Georgia. Tim's going to the longest target out there. He's shooting the 45-yard black buck. So if he can get a ring there, that's where you pick up a few points is the really long targets. If you can pick up a bonus ring there, not everybody's going to hit those, so that's where you can actually make a move on the field is hitting the harder targets. Yeah. And now, there you go. There's yeah, that's, our I picture in picture. I love this look right here. Each archer is standing over top of the target that they're shooting at. Uh, so we'll see exactly where they're hitting. All right, Chuck, are you ready? Do you know what I just noticed, PJ? How many, test, how many stabilizers oh, does yeah. Tim have out front? Uh, what happened? I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Because I know. What <laughs> happened? So if we can get a look at Tim's setup there. He told me about it. Okay. So usually Tim has four stabilizers, mm -hmm. two sticking out front, two out back. Now you're going to only see one out front, and it is off to his right. And he's probably got more weight on that left back bar, as yes. you can see. So he's always tinkering, but he yes. just reduced the cost of that setup by about $300. <laughs> so if you're interested, it's a lot cheaper now. Tim, upper 12, Nailed smoked the 12. it. Smith Anthony. for an 8. Yep, he missed. Randy just over the 12. So Tim is going to be tied for the lead now. So what Tim said for that, well, we'll get to take a look at Vincent first here. Vincent uh, works in HVAC, by the way. 
Um, but Ooh, there is Chuck. He went, at the went for the 14. Not a bad, not a bad thing to do in the fifth position. So no. he'll be at 435 now. Very quickly. For our leader, Vince Grimm, for currently holding a four-point lead. Vincent shooting that 39-yard Havelina. So he's going to go to 452. High. Uh, everybody's going high, Derek. You know, and with Tim, you're going to see Tim's little 012 on this black. And I just said, if he picks up a ring on that longer target, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's big. Yep. 452, he's tied for the lead. So he said by removing that one stabilizer, it took it from a neutral position and where the bow wandered to now he has to put a little bit of, well, I'll use the term English, he has to put a little effort into the bow to get it to balance, which holds it steadier. Gotcha. 4.42 now for Anthony. With an eight and now Randy. I believe got a 10. 10. Yep, 10. 444 right, for him. Next target, so in. now, right now we have first second place is Randy Berno. There's a 452 tie with Tim and Vincent. And then Randy is eight points behind them. He's in third right now. So he did move up one position already. Yep, there's our leaderboard. Yep. 442. Randy Morocco jumped ahead of Anthony for third. And uh, so we should mention here, uh, Darren, that there are six events across the ASA season, Delta McKenzie Tour. Right. These well, archers are competing for Shooter of the Year. It's we'll the best the uh, five combined scores, of course. Thank you know, you they shoot the first five. They can drop one score, have to shoot the classic. Mm -hmm. So how they, and this does not factor into that. It's right. their weekend scores out on the ranges. But mm -hmm. Randy Morocco right. holds a, We'll Pretty good lead in that yeah. with yeah. his two previous tournaments and coming in top five here. Yeah, a lot of arrows to go. A lot can happen in three more events because the weather conditions are a big factor. The the settings, the terrain are a big factor. So we got a we're halfway there. Tim Gillingham is on fire. He is just hitting everything. He's all business, isn't he? And after the first day, you'd have thought he lost and missed a couple targets. He was. Good look at Anthony right there. He went at the 14. Just missed it. Yep. There's Chuck. Got, Got it. it. Good yep. shot. Okay. He did not call Randy upper. Morocco. That's going to be 12 points for him. Randy was calling upper. There's Randy. Did he try to make a move? No, that's got to be. Ooh, that's really close. Right I think there. he's got it. Oh, wow. He's looking for that upper 12. Boy, wow. that is so I, close, I, Darren. I, that's got to be there. <sighs> that's got to be there, I think. 10. Or 12, there excuse me. Yep, 12 for Randy. So what Scott Parrott has told me before is that when he's up there, there's got to be clear evidence that it is not the higher rate. Yeah. He's not going to take points away. Yeah. And, you know, folks can argue at home, but that, that yeah. was not clear. <laughs> 12 points for Chuck. 447. 447. Yeah, the targets are never perfect. It's a yes. foam. They, they have to make them in a mold, and then they, they I say, I'm going to say burn those rings in there. Oh, I don't yeah. know how they're, maybe the rings are molded in there when they make the target, but they just don't come out perfect every time. So there are some blemishes, the paint cracks, chips, you know, it's, that's just the way it is, you right. know. Um, so sometimes it is hard to make the exact right call, or sometimes there's a discrepancy or a matter of opinion on, oh, I thought it was in, oh, I thought it was yeah, out. Look at all those bubbles yeah. you saw in that one. 12 for Timmy. Was it for Tim? Yeah. Was I babbling when they mentioned what Vincent got? I guess I was. Uh, Vincent got a 10. Okay. I was talking away through that. 462 for Vincent, 12 for Tim, 464, so he takes the lead. And an 8 for Anthony, so 450. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. This will be the fourth arrow coming up. They just shot the third. And again, same, same situation. Anybody within 10 points of the leader will get to shoot the sixth and potentially final arrow. 
And so that's there's probably some of that in there with Vincent. You know, this is his first pro pressure point shoot down. Tim has been in umpteen. Yeah. Who knows how many? This is just another walk in the park for Tim. I am down here doing my bow. And these guys are like, oh crap, I'm shooting in front of everybody. This is on TV. <laughs> They're probably talking talking about me out there. You know, whatever's going through their mind. And things go so fast while they're out there too. So next thing you know, you blink and Tim's hit four bonus rings in front of you and <laughs> taking the lead. All right, gentlemen, we'll start your one minute now. Randy's got a big stack of weight on the back of that back bar yeah. right there. Yeah, as you mentioned, super strong indoor game does he have. Mm -hmm. NFA indoor national champ, Vegas champ. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> didn't even need to do it, but it's the shortest target. He, he's going to shoot at that. When he's in this kind of groove, he is hard to beat. I'll just say that. So Vincent just shot a center 10 on that hyena. Here's a look at Randy. Okay, Smith, a 450. That's the longest target. No, uh, 39 yards, second longest target. Good shot. Yep. I'm sure he called up or he Anthony did. Anthony Smith. Oh, that's a 14. That's 14 yeah. points. There he goes. Nice. 464 for him now. That'll take the nerves away when you make something like that happen right there. I think Randy Morocco, who's already scored two 12 rings so, so far. He did call for the There he goes. And he does have the upper score. That takes him to 12 for Randy. Yeah, that takes him to 468. Two for two on bonus rings. Let's see what Chuck did on this yeah. black buck. It looks a little low. Chuck Cornell currently at 447 on the black buck. It's ah, a, yeah. It's a lot low, actually. That's going to be mm -hmm. five points. He's outside that ring there. Five. That's the eight he's ring, so he's going to take a five. Four, 52. All right, Vincent Grimm has a little round to make up now. He's currently two points behind. Tim. Vincent sent ten. ten. Four seventy two. A solid, a solid ten for Vincent. Moves him to four seventy two. <laughs> and it looks like Tim Tim's here. here. Tim's Tim's gonna, Tim. Here. He's going to take a six point lead with this arrow. He's just grinning from ear to ear right now too. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I got you. I'm got you. <laughs> Fourteen <laughs> points. That's what he does. Four, they call seven, him the hammer. Eight. <laughs> All right. Tim now is at 478 with 22 bonus rings. He's gone 12, 12, 12, 14. 12, 12, 12, 14 for Tim Gillingham, we just heard. I, it wouldn't surprise me to see him shoot at the 14 on this pronghorn either. I mean, this is the second closest, 33 yeah. yards. That's. I don't want to say a gimme for him. Plus, it's an antelope. He lives in Utah. If he if he does shoot at the 14 and he hits it, he will almost be unbeatable because he'll take a eight or ten point lead depending on what Vincent does. Yeah. So he could he could almost seal the deal here. If he shoots a 12, he's still like almost unbeatable. I think he's looking at scores he's now. Going, what do I do? Yeah. There's a good look at Vincent. There's Vincent. He's going to step off of here in a minute and go, what in the world just happened? Again, Vincent shot a great round today to battle up into that top position there. It's Anthony Smith. Good look at him. Mm -hmm. You can see his thumb slowly yeah, coming slowly to that trigger. Slowly that trigger. Boom, add some pressure. He caught oh, up, and I think he got it. There's a good look at Vincent bearing down on it. Just left, I think. I think he'll catch a 10. Randy didn't like that one. Ooh. All right. Randy's going to take an 8. So Here Tim may have, Tim. He may have waited to see what everybody else did. So he'll yep. probably shoot it to 12 now. Yeah. Since he saw there was a couple of mistakes out there. No, oh, he went after it. Oh, and he missed it. Under it. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's unlikely. He was trying to seal the deal. Yeah. I can't say I can't be mad at him for that. You can see him lift his bow at the end, and he knew it was dropping. Just under it. Gave it some English. Tim, 486. 
All right, that didn't hurt him too bad. Four out of five rings is pretty good. Yeah. And the guy right behind him. Oh, he's going to be just left of that connector. Five. I thought he had that initially, but you can see that connector. He's just oh, left yeah. of that point. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing that's going to be a 10. Okay. Yep, it is. there it is. 474. So he is not within 10 points of Tim. He won't make the final arrow. There's Randy. Oh, he gave a little English, yeah. too. He didn't like that. Sometimes your bow will move right at the last second, the release will fire, and you know instantly, like, my pin was not where I wanted to hit. Yep. 476. Mm -hmm. So he is within 10 points of Tim, so he'll get to shoot at least one more arrow. Here we come to Chuck. And there's a 14. Mm -hmm. 14. Chuck Dernell. 466. He's not within 10 points of Tim. Vincent needs a 12 here to put some pressure on Tim. And it may. Boy. See, for me, Darren, that's that, that's a clear look at. There was all those bubbles yeah. in that line. That's How a, do you? That's a suspect core right there. That's not yeah. a. That's not a normal. That's almost a blim core right there. Yeah. So they got, he got a 10, 482. Oh, yeah. So Tim will be shooting last with 486. Let's see, who's going to shoot first? Randy Morocco is going to shoot first, 476. The worst he can do is third. Vincent Grimm is going to shoot second. He's four points behind Tim, and then Tim will get the last arrow for a chance to win his first tournament this year. Yeah, we should mention Tim made the switch this year. This is, an, this is also a new class, senior known pro, and Tim dominated the unknown mm -hmm. uh, senior pro last year. He was the shooter of the year. He won, I think, all but one event and where he was judging. And let's note, complained the whole time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Called it a judging contest. Yeah, it's, it's nothing but a yardage judging contest. But Tim shoots good. He, he gets frustrated because if he can see it, he feels like he can hit it. Right. When you throw the aspect of judging in there where you have to guess the distance and it's wrong, you typically don't hit what you're aiming at. That's what he got frustrated about. Yeah. So he was just like, this isn't archery. You know, <laughs> it is archery, just a different kind. Different kind. Yeah. yeah. Tim's awesome. He, he is. And <laughs> He wanted to support this new class, too, so yeah. he jumped over and, I mean, gave away, you know, potentially thousands of dollars to do so. You know, he, who knows what he would have done if he had stayed there, but he came over and now he's preparing mm -hmm. to potentially collect his first win. Yeah, and if you, don't, if you don't follow Tim on social media, you should. If you, if you want to know about arrows and tuning and things, he, he goes to the extreme. He does a lot of things that normal people or a typical bow hunter probably wouldn't do. Right. He does a lot of things that would help a lot of people. So he has really good info. He's an expert when it comes to arrows and tuning and setups. So he puts out a lot of really good information as well. He does. Yep. I like to talk to Tim. I have questions at times about, you know, hey, which arrow, which knock, which vein? Is three fletch better than four fletch on this one and why? And he's, he's got an answer for all of it. He does. You know, I, I, I really, he's, a, he's a, a plethora, I guess would be a good name, plethora of information. Yeah. Encyclopedia. And we'll share it with anyone yes. who asks him. Yeah, he's good about taking time with people. And there's really no secrets anymore with with social media yeah. platforms and things, YouTube. I mean, there's just so much information out there, but Tim is a good source if you have questions. So if you need his phone number, it's... <laughs> <laughs> there's Randy checking the wind there, <laughs> which there is none for our last chance archery, last chance arrow here. And Scott Parrott has moved them in front of the line and he did bring out the deer, or are they shooting another target? If I was at the casino yes. and they would let me bet a lot of money right now, since Randy's 10 points behind Tim and he can finish no worse than third, I'd say he's going to try to hit that big black spot up there by that 14 or somewhere near that. Oh, pretty good effort. Got it. <laughs> 
pretty good effort. Good shot. Four Randy. nine zero. All right. Four nine zero. So Vincent. Yeah. So what? Vincent. What that does for Randy is if Vincent is to do something here and shoot an eight, they're tied. Yeah. So if Randy has more bonus rings, which I think he does now because of the shoot down, Randy would jump into second. So that's how important each arrow is out here. He shot that 14. If Vincent were to make a mistake and shoot an yeah. eight, Randy could slip into second. Yeah, they came in, Vincent and Randy, with the same number of bonus rings. Mm -hmm. So the ones Randy shot here have put him in front. Yep, he 12 the first one. He 12 the second one. He 12 the third one and got that one. So he's got four more rings now. All right, let me know when you're ready, Vincent. All right, so you're Vincent, you're in your first shoot down. What are you doing? I'm protecting second place for one, so I'm not going to shoot at eight. I probably won't shoot at the 14 because, you know, Tim's probably going to match right. you if you do. So I'm going to probably make sure if I miss, I miss in that 10 ring. Second's not what you hope for when you come in with the lead, but you don't want to stand up there and shoot at eight and give second place away because it's probably a couple thousand extra dollars. So protect right here at least get a 10 and take second place if you need to that's my that's my thought process right now there you go and he did call upper there you go good play Vincent Graham so 12 points will put him at 494 yeah okay. so Tim needs a 10 12. yep Let's see what that does. Congrats to Vincent. Your first pro shoot down. Come away with a podium. We don't know where yet. No worse than second. Mm -mm. Good for him. Now, if you're Tim, you set your sight and you aim as dead close to the middle as that 10 ring as you can. You get the 10 and take your win and go home. Yeah. He's a gambler, but he's not this big of a gambler. Yeah, I'd say he's feeling pretty good about this. He'll probably smoke that 11 ring right in the middle. 486, 10 will put him at 496, and he'll take his first win this year. Oh, wow. Good recovery. There it is. <laughs> and he, he did call, call upper, upper, so he got it. <laughs> So usually when Tim does that little hesitation, the next the, when an arrow leaves the bow, it's dead center. He does it repeatedly. Has done it tons of times. You've called that shot several <laughs> times over the years. As soon like, as he flinches, you yeah, say he's going to hit. Oh, he's going to smoke it. <laughs> Twelve points, four ninety-eight for Tim. As we mentioned, Vincent Grimm will take second place. Randy Morocco finishes third. So I mean, Randy's three for three on podiums. Mm -hmm. This year, that's. I'm sure Vincent will, like I said, he's going to sit back and go, what happened? How, <laughs> how did I lose that lead? Well, when Tim hits four out of five and then hits the sixth one, it's it's hard to keep up with that. <laughs> there he is, Tim Gillingham, first win of the year. How does that feel? Oh, he didn't hear me there. Now we're going to turn him on there. There we go, Tim. All right. Hey, <laughs> take your first win of the year. How does that feel, Tim? You know, it's been kind of a monkey on my back this year. It's new bow year, and I've been struggling a little bit. And and yesterday was rough. First three targets of the day was rough. And I just I really was questioning whether I could even make the shoot off, let alone win the tournament. And it seems like some of my best shooting has always come when my back's against the wall, and I really need to get it done. I felt like last night I spent a lot of time shooting and I was shooting well and but man the first three targets I felt like I shot pretty good shots and they didn't hit and I got an eight and I'm like burying myself and <laughs> but I dug my way back out and got in it and this seemed easy for some you reason until that last 10. <laughs> you started the you started the shoot down 12 12 12 14. Yeah the 14 was kind of the <laughs> kicker there I, I, I decided you know if I can't hit a 14 to 28 yards I don't deserve to be a senior known pro so <laughs> uh <laughs> and i figured if i could do that that would kind of cinch it so i could see it in the scope and uh then the antelope kind of got in my head i guess i was trying to close it out <laughs> i know when you shot the judging classes tim you always said momentum it was you know you yeah. were either judging good and it got better or you were judging bad and it got worse yeah 
and I feel like you had the momentum there. You hit yeah. a ring, and with every shot, you got more confident, more confident. Do you feel like that's you know is momentum still a huge factor in your game? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, I, after I shot that eight this morning, I shot four twelves in a row, made one kind of so-so shot, and then I come back with six in a row. And so yeah, I was able to develop some good momentum and. And yeah, that that did pretty good in the shootoff. I was uh, pretty tickled. It just, it really came pretty easy those first three or four shots, and then I started thinking about it. So yeah, congrats, man. Big win. Thank good you. job. Congratulations, Tim. Great Thank round.
ASA archers competing in the pro divisions at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am battled it out in the swamps of Camp Minden, Louisiana the past two days. While deep mud, thick foliage, and tricky ranges humbled many, there were others who found a different gear and climbed to the top of the leaderboards. Now it's time to head indoors to see who among the leaders has what it takes to shoot their way to glory and fat paychecks in the pro pressure point shoot down. Let's get to the action right now. Welcome everybody to the Bossier Civic Center, the third stop on the Delta McKenzie ASA Tour. There you can see us at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am Camp Minden, Louisiana. We are halfway through our 2023 Delta McKenzie ASA Tour. You can see next up will be in London, Kentucky in June, Metropolis, Illinois for the Matthews Pro-Am in July. And we're gonna finish things up with the McKenzie Classic, Coleman, Alabama, August 5th. Welcome everybody to the Competition Archery Media broadcast. I am sitting here, my name is PJ Riley, sitting alongside Darren Christianberry. Darren, we are in this beautiful indoor facility, but we were outside the last two days. We were, and if you watched the forecast, you may not have shown up at the shooting ranges, but they missed it a little bit. We got to shoot some beautiful weather on Friday, a little bit rainy today, but we got all 40 targets in for the qualifying round. Now we get to watch some really good archers shoot off for the win, so it should be good. This is the pro pressure point shoot down, so we're gonna watch our four pro classes here at the ASA. Darren, these are some of the best archers in the world. They are, I mean, some legends, you know, Levi Morgan, Jeff Hopkins, Killed it this weekend. Cara Kelly, Sharon Wallace still battling out there. So we've got some, uh, and the known pros, they shot some big scores and it's really tight. So we should see some pretty competitive shoot offs. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we can't wait to get the action started, but first we're gonna go to ASA president, Josh Grein. He's gonna tell us about our event this weekend. This is not wet, this is muddy. <laughs> We're in Camp Minden, Louisiana, just outside for our second year of the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. And we're on the military base, 14,000 acres of Camp Minden. And we've set up our ranges here. We've got, the thing we like about these 14,000 acres is in our 17 ranges, you can shoot one day and you might be wide open and good visibility. And then the next day the train is very different. So we've got a lot of options here with that and that's great. The communities here, we've got the three local parishes, Bossier City, Shreveport, Sports Commission. They've done a phenomenal job getting this place ready to work throughout the year. Uh, it's, you know, the, the support here is, is crazy. I was down on the range setting targets the other day and I made a comment, I'm like, ah, a mosquito got me. Two hours later, they had mosquito trucks here treating every lane out here. We, had, we have had some water this morning I got here and there are trucks coming through, dump trucks with gravel and it, this, the support here is just phenomenal. So we're excited. Year two, um, the, the improvements that we've seen, we're really looking forward to the future because we have a long-term commitment here. It's a new enhanced setup. We're going to call this the Wonder Bar. Did you ever wonder? Now you don't have to. So we're at, we're at stop three of the Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. So when we complete this one, we're halfway through the, the tour season. And so we're, we're really starting to see people solidify themselves in the run for shooter of the year and rookie of the year. And uh, we start to build the excitement towards the end. With that excitement comes some realization that, oh man, we're, we're halfway through. The, the 2023 ASA Pro-Am tour season's almost over. Um, so it, we're just excited. Everybody being back here, the, the, the buildup is great. As we are in the Bossier City Shreveport area, our shoot down here will take place in the Bossier Civic Center. Beautiful indoor facility. Last year we were 
we had standing room only. Uh, the local news stations have been here promoting it. They've been putting videos on social, so we expect a great turnout again for the for the Pro Pressure Point shoot down on Saturday. We have had some weather out here. As I've said, they've, the military base is, is on top of that, keeping trying to keep our roads and lanes as dry as possible. But for the Pro Pressure Point shoot down on Saturday, being indoors, weather won't affect it. So we expect that to, to go off as normal and without any hitches. So here at the ASA, we like to score arrows with risk and reward, that's kind of the name of the game. So it's not just to aim at the center type mentality when you're talking about shooting these arrows down the range. We actually have really high risk shots that reward these archers really well. So I'm gonna explain this. Anywhere in the body of this target is five points. Then you have the large ring. This is eight points anywhere inside of this excluding or outside of the tin ring or this ring up here that I'll talk to you about just in a second. So this is 10 points right here. You have this as a core line. This is just for the replacement part of this target because this gets shot a lot, but right inside of there, it's about a four inch circle is 10 points. And then down here we have the lower 12. And we also have an upper 12. This center ring is really not for anything that we do here at the ASA. But this ring and this ring are worth 12 points. Now the archers have to call this upper one. This is about the size of a 50 cent piece, a half dollar. And then the grand ring of all, the one that all these archers want to hit if they could do it every time, would be this ring right here. And this is 14 points. And if you miss slightly, that's eight points. If you miss a little bit further, that's five points. So a big nine point swing from 14 to five is quite a swing. So these guys are gonna want to really dial it in when they're shooting at that one. All right, Nathan, thank you for that explanation. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our women's pro division. We'll be right back, don't go anywhere. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. shoot down Sharon Wallace your first place qualifier Jeff Rainey your number one qualifier Miss Cara Kelly Mr. Levi Morgan that's Mr. McCarthy
<laughs> Good shot for Kara. Yeah. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. The lighting can also play a huge part. Sometimes it makes it go left or right. So we'll just go in there and see what you can do. That's, the best. That's all you can do. All right, folks, welcome back to the Bossier Civic Center. Women's Pro is our division. Up next, Darren Christenberry, there's the leaderboard. Tell us what we got. Yeah, no no stranger to being in top there. Cara Kelly at a 405, Sharon Wallace at a 402, the young lady from Canada, Erin McGladdery at 395, Laura Huff and Lindsey Christian are both tied at 392. There's a little bit of a spread from first to fifth, but as you guys have seen in the past with the bonus rings in play, that's why we shoot six more arrows to see who's going to win this thing. Well, Darren, before we get to the action tonight, we want to take a look back. It was just about a month ago that we were in Fort Benning. Let's take a look at what happened there in this division. Car Kelly, she just came in here, executed a plan, and she has a commanding lead. The other ladies are going to have some work to do if they want to chip away at that. In women's pro, Cara Kelly started the tournament in the lead, and she never gave it up all weekend long. By the time the sixth and final arrow came in the shoot down, Kara could have missed and she still would have won. She didn't miss and she took home her first title of 2023. Haven't been able to see many targets up in the Great White North. So um, coming down here, it was um, kind of roll with hopefully my shots paying off and, <laughs> and judging will be good and everything will fall together. You know, it's like you make good decisions, you stick with your game plan, you do what you have to do and um, hopefully bring home the W. So. All right, we're going to get the action started here. Let's go to the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks. Bring him out. All right, guys, we're going to get started this afternoon here with the women's pro class. Your fifth place qualifier from Weston, Idaho, shooting for prime. She's a mother of two and a do-it-all outdoors woman, Lindsay Christensen. Your fourth place qualifier from Clarksville in Tennessee. Shooting for Matthews. She's a nine year veteran pro, Laura Huff. From Marsden, Saskatchewan, Canada. Shooting for Hoyt. She might be an American at heart, I don't know, but it is Aaron McGlattery. And in second place from Townville, South Carolina, shooting for PSE, the wife of Jack and his better half, Sharon Wallace. And your first place qualifier from Lapeer, Michigan, shooting for Matthews, also a mother of two and one heck of a shooter. It's Cara Kelly.
All right, Darren, there we have it. And let's lay the uh, give folks what's happening out there. What are we doing with these ladies they are shooting? Yeah, we've shot 40 targets for qualifying, and that's how we've got our scores, 405, 402, et cetera, et cetera. Now they're going to shoot one arrow from five different stations. We're going to shoot an arrow. We're going to score it, rotate. They're going to shoot five arrows. Anybody within 10 points of the leader after those five will get a shoot a sixth and final arrow. So with the bonus rings in play, you have a chance to make a move. You've only got six targets to do in it, and it goes really fast. And these ladies are shooting unknown distance, so they are judging these targets. And we have an antelope, javelina, black buck, hyena, and wolf. That is our order of targets from one to five. Let's look at Lindsay Christensen. Mm -hmm. We see Lindsay more and more in these shoot-offs. I mean, she's, I'm not surprised, but Lindsay, she's a good yardage judger, and she's really becoming more and more consistent, and that's really good to see. She's quite the busy lady. She travels, like, all over the world hunting and then has a very busy job. She's a, a nursing consultant, I believe. Yeah, I think she goes back and forth to Alaska. To Alaska. Quite, yeah, from Idaho to Alaska, and here we are in Louisiana. She's a long way from home. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go first to Cara Kelly on the antelope. Just a little low there Eight for points. Cara. So she obviously misjudged that a little bit. That's why she's low. Yeah. So she underjudged it some. An eight will put her to 413. I talk to Cara a lot on the ranges. We have some good laughs out there. And I was like, did you beat me today? And, you know, did you beat me today? So <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a good time out there. We shoot the same ranges. The senior pros shoot the same range as the women. So I know exactly what they went through this weekend. There's a good look That's at Aaron. Miss Canada. There was a 10 for Sharon, uh, so she's at 412, and now we're at Aaron McLattery, also with a 10. And yes, I mean, Aaron, I saw pictures from last week. There was still snow on the ground, frozen rivers. I mean, as different as you could get from southern Louisiana. I joked a lot with Aaron today, and I said, I'm going to bring this up on, on air, you know, and because she, she lives in Canada. It's very expensive to do the travel that she does. And she's like, I just need to find me some sugar daddy. I said, well, I'm going to advertise <laughs> for you on air. We'll see if we can't get you hooked up with somebody here. So. Uh, she's a good sport. She is. She's such just. a good shot, and it's so expensive yeah. for her to travel. I don't want to see her not shoot archery. Five points. That's is that for Laura? That's for Laura, yes. 397. So, Aaron, please don't be mad at me for that. That was all in good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Laura was our first archer out the last two tournaments. So, she finally got in there. So, she could shoot. Yes. She just needed to catch those couple extra points to get in there. Lindsay's going to move to a 402. So now they've shot that first arrow. They're going to rotate one position, and we're going to do it all again. Yeah. Sharon and Cara will battle right here. Mike just mentioned it with Cara's eight. They're now only with him one point. One point separates first and second place right now. Yeah, and so uh, Sharon won our first event in Foley. Cara won our last event in Benning. So they're probably looking to break that tie. And really good, too. Really good archers. They both shoot the indoor game. And that's when you can tell a lot about a person's ability or their consistency. At 20 yards in a fixed environment, you just stand there and you pound the middle those two can stand there and pound the middle so it's no it's no uh, it's it's what's the word i'm looking for pj it's 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 yeah i don't it's not even surprise yeah it's not surprising that. Yeah. that they're always in the mix because they shoot really really good and now you got to look here each archer is standing over top of the target they're shooting at so we'll know right away what they're hitting that's such a cool look Laura, oh, 10. Laura got the 10. Sharon, Sharon let down. Sharon let down. Aaron let so down. Aaron. They got long in their hold. When you The longer you hold, your eyes lose a little bit of oxygen. You don't see as good. Your bow starts to move a little bit. You've got a minute, so you've got time to let down, regroup, take a deep breath, start over, and that's what they've done. It's 25 seconds right now on the clock. And I believe Aaron's shooting the longest target. Oh, did got she it. Call she did. She did, and she smoked it. Oh, and Sharon shot a five. 
Yeah, there's a little circle down there, but that's not a oh circle wow. for hey, points. No. And Kara shot a 12. Lindsay. This is huge. That's a huge arrow right there. Lindsay had called upper. Shot an eight. She shot an eight. Puts her at 410. Now I'll come over to Kara. This is going to be big. Sharon may have got short on the clock. I didn't see how much time was left, but I know she let down. That's really close. Wow. Oh, we just did. I think it's got it. Man. Yeah, that's oh, 12 points. That's got to. That's 12 points. There it is. That's the second longest target out there. 25. That's a good one on that Havelina. Like I said, Sharon, she, excuse me, she did let down, so she may have been short on clock and had yeah. to just continue to pull through the shot. And that's going to be a five. Five for Sharon. Five for Sharon. That Havelina actually is the longest target. I don't know the distance, but it is the longest target out there. We should mention, uh, Darren, Max distance for these ladies, it can be no longer than. Well, there's a good look at a 12 from Aaron. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that first. Yeah, but she smoked it. Uh, max distance here is Sh approximately 50. Right. You won't see anything much over 50. You might get a 51 here and there, but they try not to really go over 50 yards. 417 for Aaron. And by the way, boys, she can shoot. Yes, yeah, she can. Good 10 for Laura, 407. So after the first arrow, when Carr shot that eight, it pulled her and Sharon within one point of each other. But then when Carr 12 the Havelina and Sharon took that five, Carr now has an eight point lead over Sharon. And Sharon is tied for second with Aaron. So that was a huge arrow for everybody right there. Big swing right there. Yeah. But we have three or four arrows to go, far from over. I wonder if Sharon's doubting her numbers. I see her looking at the ground there like she was kind of judging again to say, okay, did I screw that up in more than one way? Or yeah. I think she's just really trying to say, okay, let's go back and regroup, take another look, make sure you've got the right number, and make this one count. She's all focused again now. That lady right there has got some serious 3D game and indoor game. She's a great shot. Shooting a thumb trigger, wrapping that thumb. She'll pull, 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 and it's going to break eventually. It'll explode. Got the long. Oh, she got it. Ah. <laughs> She's, She's shaking her yeah, head. She didn't like that. Aaron's let down, taking a deep breath here. Sharon's not not happy with that. Aaron shoots a hinge style release. She's going to pull, pull, pull until that shot breaks. You'll see it explode. Boom. Good shot. Good just good left shot. of the upper. Yeah. She's judged these pretty good. She's been right there yeah. at the correct height the whole time. There's a good look at Laura. Watch that arrow. Boom. Right dead in the center of the center tent. Uh, so, Darren, we should mention these ladies. Uh, ASA has a maximum speed rule of 280 feet per second. They can't go over that. Now, there is an allowance of 3%, so it can get up to 286, 287. Yeah. Uh, but that's what they're shooting. When we see the men later, it'll be 10 feet per second faster than that. Yep. Uh, but there's Lindsay five shooting five that. Five. Javelina. Four. 15 for Lindsay. There's a good look at Carr. She holds so steady. She's a solid shooter, just right of that 12. Just right. Good for her. That's going to be a 10, 10 for Carr. And they do the speed limit to level the playing field. If you saw, right. if you, if you, 
if you, you know, Tim Gillingham, six foot six, he's got a 33 inch draw length. He can get a bow blazing fast. And if you get, it's like a bullet. When a bullet travels out of a rifle, it doesn't drop very much. Same with, same way with arrows. If an arrow's traveling really fast, it doesn't drop very much. So when you're guessing distance, if you could shoot super, super fast and you make a mistake, the arrow doesn't fall as much. So when you put a 280 speed limit, it just levels the field all the way across. Yeah. Now you have to go, how good can you judge? How good can you execute? It doesn't matter if you're just tall with long arms. Mm -hmm. You can. They set a limit to, to, to make it a yardage judging contest, to make it a shooting contest, because if you could shoot 330 versus 280, it's not even fair. Yeah. All right, so we're going to reset the leaderboard here. I know Aaron had a 10 because I was babbling through all that. 427 for Aaron. And Sharon, I believe, shot the eight high on the hyena, so she'll be at a 425. Yep, there we go. So Aaron, yes, I was right with that. Aaron has slipped into second place. She's eight points behind Cara right now. Sharon has dropped into third, 10 points behind Cara. And then Laura and Lindsay are battling out there for fourth right now, a few points behind Sharon. So still, we've only shot three arrows. We got two more to go at least. Dogs in the audience as well. <laughs> There's Mackenzie Smith with her puppy. Love to see the dogs out on the ranges. There you see Cara shooting the hens. She's going to rotate, rotate, rotate. Boom. Great execution. Long target. It's a there. long target. Center 10. That's what she needs to do. Not give anything up right yep. there. Sharon, on the other hand, she needs to start finding some rings. Mm -hmm. She's aiming just a little bit long. Something's, yeah. her timing's just a touch off tonight. Yeah, that's long. Yeah, Hold for her. She's just tall again. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's ready to break something. I can tell. She looked over here like, I just don't know what's going on. There's Aaron. Let's see what we got. Aaron currently in first and second place. Good 10 for Aaron. Good 10, yeah. It's going to move her to 437 for Aaron McGlattery from Marsden, Saskatchewan. I have been there. Have you really? Yeah, I have. I was up there waterfowl hunting, and it is in the middle of nowhere. They have they measure the snow in meters up there. <laughs> I have no <laughs> business being up there. Yeah. No business. Five for Laura. Five for Laura. Puts her to 422. Laura's husband, Michael Huff, is in the audience here somewhere. Right, there he is. I see him right across the way there. He shoots in the open pro division. Did Lindsay call that? Out? She did not. She smoked that yeah. upper 12, but she Center didn't call it, so it's it. just a 10. <laughs> Great arrow. 425. I did see Aaron post something the other day. She was shed hunting, had a good day shed hunting, found tons of antlers. Some moose antlers, yes. mule deer. I think she actually found a match set from the deer she harvested last year, too. So pretty cool story she had about that. Yeah. 445 for Cara. And let's see what Sharon's going to do to see if she can get back in the hunt. Big crowd here tonight, Darren mm -hmm. Crisberry. I mean, we talked about being standing room only last year. I, it's that again this year. But there's that eight for Sharon. Four thirty-three. It is raining outside, so there's nothing really to do out there. Nope. Might as well come watch Archer. Might as well be in here or tune in and watch it. And you know, let's while we're waiting for the next shot, let's talk about that ASA. You know, they've got classes for kids who are six years old and classes for folks who are 80. Yes. Yeah. Everything in between, it, whatever equipment. Yep. If it shoots an arrow, likely there's a, you know, traditional recurve mm -hmm. crossbow. These are these trophies that they have uh, special here for all the winners tonight. Alligator heads, we're in Louisiana. I mean, come on. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So that's the tournament or the plaques that they're going to take home in addition to those thousand dollar checks i'd rather have that alligator well That's maybe not that first cool. place check it's a pretty cool plaque yeah <laughs> i did have boiled shrimp last night it was good <laughs> it was really good yeah. there have been quite a few crawfish boils down here yeah there's old steady car 
She aims so good, executes consistently. She hit the exact same spot that Sharon did. Yeah. Chance for Aaron to make a little bit of room up right here. Good shot. Oh, and got she, it. Oh, and she, she called I'll up. Tell her. you what, that's a swing there, a four-point swing. Girl's got game. Yeah. That's big. That is oh, big. Wow. And Aaron has never won an ASA. We no, talked she about is not. that the other day, and I was like, "Have you ever won?" She's like, mm, "Sheepishly, no." Yeah. It's hard. You she's know. I, compared to some of the ladies. She's relatively new to archery. Yes. Comparatively. Comparatively, yeah. Eight points for Sharon. Four forty-one. She's going to. Yeah. Twelve. There it points. is. Good for her. Wow. Four. Great four shot. Nine. On the longest target, and it's a black target. I mean, those are the most difficult to and see. And it's little, anyway. little, small, hard, long distance. Hard to judge. That is an excellent shot. Laura or Laura. Cara twelve that target too. So they ten for Laura. 432. When you pick up those rings on those long targets, you that's when you make your moves because yeah. not everybody will hit those long ones. That's why Kara is going to be disappointed on this wolf. Cause All right. Lindsay, she's going to take an eight just low. Eight for Lindsay. Moves her to 433. 433. 433. Now we can round to Kara. That boy, she's so. She's mad at this one. This is one of the shorter targets out yeah. there. She's pretty mad. A little bit of frustration on her yeah, face there, you can tell. All right. So 453. All right, so four point game now. Mm -hmm. Just two ladies, so uh, Sharon is going to finish in third with a 441, yep. and then Aaron will shoot a sixth arrow. She's four points behind Sharon, or sorry, four points behind Kara. So Aaron will shoot first, and then Kara will get to see what she needs to do to try to win this thing. So with just with Aaron four points behind, she's got to shoot a 14, regardless yep. of the target, regardless of the distance. If she wants to win, she needs to 14 right, this target. Finishing out our. Oh, we're gonna get. We just heard the tie for bonus rings. Car has more over Aaron. Is that what they said? I believe so. Gotcha. Um, well, Aaron can miss the target and still get second. So yeah, that that pre that pressure is off of her. If she wants a chance to win. She has to shoot a 14. And if Car still has more bonus rings, then Car really needs to just shoot a 10. But as you can see, you know, she shot that short wolf and did shoot an eight out the top. So there's no guarantees ever. Uh, we should mention Lindsay Christensen finishes fourth and Laura Huff is gonna be finishing fifth for this weekend. So congratulations to them mm -hmm. on a great round. We mentioned Sharon will be on the podium in third. All right. I call Aaron McGillicuddy. I know that's not her last name, but when you say McGlattery, I was like, I call her McGillicuddy. So. <laughs> yeah, there's a good look at our last chance archery, last chance arrow. We have the deer out there. Last chance archery, one of the great manufacturers in archery, making all kinds of tools. And so what happens here, Dar well, Darren, tell, tell the folks what Scott did. So this, you know, he, they don't have a real good guess. Yeah, he's, he's picked it. He's, they've set a new target out. So they've got a target they didn't shoot in the first five. It's the medium HD deer. And then Scott has walked up and found a distance that he's like, okay, here's where I want you ladies to shoot. He set a cone down. He gave them a second cone that they can put out if they want to call the upper. Sh uh, Aaron's going to shoot first. Like I said, she's. She's got to shoot the 14 here if she wants to win this. And then Carr is going to shoot second, and we're going to see how it plays out. And this is one of those, the deer is one of those targets where it's more obvious that that 14 ring is actually bigger than the 12s. Mm -hmm. This so target, this exact target yesterday, when we shot our round yesterday, fooled my socks off. It, it looked a mile <laughs> 
down this lane, and I was like, oh, it's got to be 49 or 50. And I was like, I'm going to shoot 49 at center 10. And I fired a great shot, and boom, I hit about where Cara did on that wolf a minute ago. I hit out the top of the 10, and I never do that. So <laughs> it fools me. I mean, well, I'm sure if these, these targets fool a lot of people, but yeah. it really got me this weekend. I never shoot high on that thing. All right, here she goes. There you go. You can see she's kind of shooting diagonal, too, where mm -hmm. they were shooting straight down the lane before. Now she's kind of at an angle. So, you know, these ladies are excellent yes. judges, but this messed with them a little bit. Yeah. I'm never going to root against either one of these ladies, but I would really like to see Aaron hit this 14. It would do wonders for her confidence going forward. This place will go nuts if she does. Oh, oh, just, just low right. under it. She's wow. I'll give her a big clap for yep. that, though. That was a good shoot down. Good shot. A good shoot down. So with an eight, she's going to go. 57. Yeah, you know, four, five, seven. Car just, just needs to hit the target. That's it. Five points will win it. It can hit the target anywhere. Uh, folks right. at home, we do a feature competition yeah. archery media called Shot of the Week, and I spent she yesterday with Cara Kelly picking her brain. She is a genius, just the mental side of the archery game. She is a thinker, and so that will be coming out on our competition archery media YouTube channel later this week. Me shooting not well, but Cara explaining what I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 12. She, hey, <laughs> why not? I think she had. I no, know. she did not call up her. That was the other cone behind yep. her. Two in a row for Cara Kelly. She shot like a boss out there. She shot a score of 10 up today. I forgot to mention that. Like yesterday, we thought she was out of it. She shot 10 up today. That's great. To, just to get in the finals, let alone lead it. Um, so she really put together a great weekend. And she is going to have the headsets on there. And Carl, we were just talking about the day you had today just to get into the shoot down. And then you come out here and smash it like that. Uh, I don't know. It was, I mean, after yesterday's round, you try not to get discouraged. I wasn't even on the leaderboard. And I just knew I had to go out there today and put together the best performance I possibly could and just stay focused and, you know, really just, I hit a stride in the middle of my round today and, just got a lot of confidence and rolled on through. And what a whirlwind of emotions. That shoot down was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Cara, Aaron, pushed, she pushed you yes. pretty good out there when it came down to the final shot. Do you find it much easier to hit it when you know you just need a five to win instead of having to get that 10 or 12 to win? That Was that a lot easier for you? Well, it definitely took the heart rate down a little. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but, no, I mean, Aaron, I had the pleasure of shooting with Aaron all weekend. And um, it's an honor to take the range with all these women. And, you know, we push each other to be better archers, better people, and uh, it's just an honor to do this game. You did good, kid. Congrats Thank on two you. in a row. <laughs> two in so a much. row, Car. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be back at the Bozier Civic Center. Next up is our Senior Pro Division. We'll be right back.
number one qualifier in the women's shootdown, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. What a shot. You got it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Better ten. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. And he got it. Never played it safe killing him. Hunter Vinny La Selva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear with thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. hit the stake with like zero confidence the whole day. It was a long day. There were some tricky targets. I mean, it's just uh, challenging to say the least. The shadows moving, it's a typical 3D course. That's a 12. Welcome back, everybody, to the Bozier Civic Center. Senior Pro is our next division. Darren, that's your guys there. What are we looking at? The most impressive thing about this board people wouldn't understand. Jeff Hopkins shot a 226 yesterday, so his 26 up came in one day. That typically doesn't happen when you're judging yardage. So, man, what a fantastic round. But he's at a 426. He shot even today. Tony's in second, 413. Billy at 405. Jamie at 403. And Ray Young rounding out the top five at a 401. Jeff's got a good hold on this one, but we shoot him because you just never know. So this should be a great shoot off. Well, Darren, we can't wait to get to the action. But first, we want to go back to Fort Benning to see how competition there rounded out at our last event. There's a good look at Tony Tazza. Tony signature two finger release. Been shooting that forever. Tony Tazza had a special look in his eye all weekend at Fort Benning. He had a long streak of second and third place finishes dogging him, and you could tell he was hungry for a win. At Benning, he led after day one. He led after day two. He didn't even need to shoot a sixth hour in the shootdown to take his first ASA win since Paris, Texas in 2019. 
he had to double check the score. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, Tony, you can miss and you will win. <laughs> But when Mike Tyrell offered up a free turkey target, if Taz has shot it in the head, well, Tony wasn't about to let that bargain pass. He skewered the Strutter's melon. Man, I'll tell you what, guys. I mean, the last couple years, I've got a lot of runner-ups here. Yes. A lot of second places. Got second place at the last one. Whew, I just want to thank God for this. I mean, I've been working my butt off for this. And uh, finally came together for me. All right, Darren, we're going to see Tony Tazza back out here. Let's get Nathan Brooks to bring out all of our competitors. All right, moving on, let's welcome the senior pro division. Your fifth place qualifier. He's a big man with a teddy bear heart. He shoots for Matthews from Rockport, Indiana, Ray Young. And in fourth place, from Tecumseh, Michigan, he's a sculptor of young archery minds, shooting for Hort, Jamie Drulliard. Your third place qualifier from Mill Spring, North Carolina, he's always early, shooting for dart and archery, Bill McCall. And in second place, from Boswell, Pennsylvania, he's a shop owner, he's an investor, he fletches his own lasers. Shooting for Hoyt, Tony Tazza. And your first place qualifier, he's from the heartland of the United States. He's a farmer, he's a proud grandpa of Ricky and Rosie. Shooting for Matthews, Jeff Hopkins. All right, Darren, so folks who may not have ever heard of Jeff Hopkins before, he is a legend in this game. He is from 1997 to probably 2007. Jeff had only lost Shooter of the Year one time to Dan McCarthy. <laughs> and I mean, he, he's won so many tournaments, unbelievable. And as you get older, your vision goes a little bit, your ability goes a little bit. Jeff shot 226 yesterday. That doesn't happen. Yeah. He killed it, and we shot a tough range. I mean, he shot 13 12s with no eight, shot a clean round, 226 yeah. points. And I said, Jeff, I couldn't have done that with a range finder. And he's like, hmm, yeah, you know, I guess it was a good round. <laughs> so, man. And he was sick as a dog. I know. He was he was up all night, didn't get much sleep, yeah. sick the night before. But, man, oh, man, what an impressive round. And Jeff yeah. has still got it, obviously. But, you know, Tony, Bill, Jamie, Ray, this is going to be a good shoot down. But Jeff is definitely in the driver's seat. There's a good look at Jamie. Four Fletch. I talk about Four Fletch all the time. He's not going to like that. Left, no. Ray Young went at Ray the 14. Yep. I think he caught the eight line, but that's what you do when you're fifth, is you just go for it. So Jeff is up first on the antelope. And he has the cone out for upper, though. Yeah. Comes out, yep. out with a 10 for Jeff Hopkins. 436. Got it. Yeah, Jeff said yesterday was just one of those rounds you dream about. He saw the numbers. He made the shots. Everything was clicking. Yeah. Tony called the upper. Tony Tazza. Man, he's, Tony just doesn't make many mistakes. No. 425. He's probably wishing there was a turkey out here. He got that free turkey in the last shoot <laughs> from Mike Tyrell. I saw Tony had an odd number, so that means he shot a five in qualification. And I asked him, I said, what target was it? Did he get that? We'll talk about that in a second. Did Billy get that 12? Boy, that's under there. I think he's got it. Yeah, that line is so distorted. 
It said exact targets I was getting ready to talk about. We shot a black buck yesterday that was tough. Yep. Billy McCall, 417 now. But I asked Tony, I said, what'd you shoot the five on? The black buck? He's like, yep. I said, hi, yep. He probably hit my arrow hallway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so tricky. It, another one that just kind of knocked my socks off out there. But what point of all that being, Tony doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Right. So for him to shoot a five, it is unusual. He just kind of chick chips along, pecks away at it, and he's always in the mix. That's going to be an eight. I think so. Yeah, it shouldn't yep. be a five. Yeah, that's an eight for Jamie Thank there. For Jamie. Puts him to 411. So Bill's 12. He just gained six. He just widened the gap from third yeah. and fourth to six yeah. points yeah. now. Ray Young. That's going to be a five for Ray to put him on a 406. 11 years he's been shooting pro. So Jeff had a 13 point lead. Tony did shoot a 12. Jeff shot a 10. So the lead is now 11. I'm sorry, 436 with 17 bonus ranks. And Tony's at 425 with 14 bonus ranks. Jeff's job is to keep it in a 10 ring. Yeah. And Jeff is, you know, you're going to see his bow there. You're going to see that it is camouflaged. It is generally considered a hunting bow. It's the Matthews Phase 4. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second because here's that cool shot mm -hmm. again, uh, Darren, where the archers are over top of the targets they're shooting at. So you can see exactly this is cool. where they're shooting. Every time I've seen that, I said, this is cool. And it is. <laughs> this is a really, really good set. Really, really good view for everybody. Yeah. Jamie's at full draw first on the right side of your screen. So he's shooting the wolf. I don't know if he called up or not. He probably didn't. He's just, just over that lower. Billy's shooting that long hyena in the middle. He's just right of the lower 12 wow. and called upper, so he misjudged it a couple yards because he's got his cone in front, so yeah. that means he called for upper. Tony did not call upper, and he's shooting at the black buck, maybe because he can see those arrow holes. See those dark spots? Those are easy to aim off yeah. of. Smoked and it. there you go. Right on cue, TT. Two for two is Tony Taz. He, I mean, he's going to make Jeff work for it. Yeah. Tony's judging good. Tony judges good. So that means his numbers are right. So this is Ray Young up first on the antelope. He's going to take points. a 10 for 19. For 16? For, for Ray? For 19, I think. He shoot an 8. He shot a five. I oh, think. he shot a five. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think. Gotcha. I think. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I believe. Ten for Jeff. That's Jeff. That's what he needs to do. Four, four, six. Yep. Yeah, his bow is the Matthews Phase Four, which is generally considered a hunting bow, but he likes it so much he decided to use it as a target bow. <laughs> no question about that one. 437. So now the lead yes. is nine. You were correct about Ray Young. I missed that one. I like Tony's red and white Easton hat. Matches his Hoyt jersey. Yeah, yeah. it's color coordinated. That's no today. accident right there. That's no accident. 10 for Billy. 427. There's Vincent Grimm right in the middle there in the PSE jersey. We saw him earlier in the senior known pro shoot down. He got him a second place finish. Took his first podium. Solid two. Jamie. 21. Okay. Now if Tony were to hit another 12 and get this thing within five or seven points, it, yeah. it turns to a little bit of a different game, especially if Jeff were to make a mistake. Again, his job is to keep it in the tin ring. So make Tony continue to have to hit those rings and catch you. Yeah, Jeff is a good example of the need for that speed restriction because he's like 6'8 yeah. with a 
He's probably got a 38 inch draw length. He's huge. not really, he's but a, he's a big <laughs> he's a big man. Yes. That's like a what a 34 inch bow that he's shooting. It looks like a yes. toy in his hands. <laughs> There's another good look at Jamie there. Good strong shot. He, he did, did not, not call he upper. He did not call upper. There's Billy McCall. Nathan yeah. said he was always early. <laughs> He was being sarcastic. I believe so. He was being a little <laughs> bit sarcastic. Billy moves at his own pace. <laughs> See, Re relaxing yeah, his nice hand. Readjusting that release at full draw. That's interesting. Trying to get steady. Continue to pull. Ah, the bow. Ten. Yeah. I saw that bow wobble mm -hmm. just before he First shot it. Good look at Tony. Shooting that long hyena. Boom. Yeah, that Pretty arrow flight, Tony. Good 10. Center 10. Pretty arrow flight. All right, first up, Jamie Drewyard. That's going to be a 10, uh, 12. Oh, no, he did not call upper. Yep. Yep. 431 for Jamie. He must call the upper for it to be in play. Otherwise, only the lower is worth 12 points. I think Jamie's first shoot down ever was here last year. I remember watching. I, I think it was his so. first one. So he yeah. he likes Minden, Louisiana. Yeah. He's back out there again. Is this Ray? This is Ray. See, that's just such a hard that's line a to tough see. One. It's an eight. He got the eight. Yep. Yeah. Four, two, four for Mr. Ray. Ray's a he's from Southern Indiana. He's such a soft spoken fella. Man, a few words. Yep. There's Big Jeff. Uh oh. Not that's kind of what Tony needs to happen. Yeah, that's, that's he needs a, mistakes. He has to. Yeah, he, if that's not what Jeff wants to do. Right. 454. Tony shot Tony's the longest target there. He did yeah. get a 10 on this hyena, but see that a, a four-point swing right there. If Tony were to 12, that would have been humongous. Yeah. He cut it down to seven. Mm -hmm. Ten. Four, four, seven. Down to seven with two to go in regulation. Yeah. And he's coming up to one of the shorter targets on the course here in this wolf. There's Casey Koffel, <laughs> U.S. Olympian right there, waving her hand. World famous yes. Casey Koffel. She just won a World Cup team gold medal mm -hmm. in Antalya with Brady Ellison in Olympic recurve. Ten for Billy. Casey's going to be shoot competing here this weekend in Olympic recurve. She shot around today because she's not too far away in Texas, so oh, nice. she came over to compete. Came over to, came over to play. Yeah. I like it. But back to the action at hand. All right. So now, Darren. Jeff moves to the longest target out there. Tony moves to one of the shorter targets out there. If, if it, this is this is hard. I mean, Tony's in a tough spot. If he wants to really move, make a move to win, a 14 would be amazing here. He's got a pretty good lock on second place right now. But again, if he wants to win, this is the target to try the 14 on. I don't know that I would do that if I was in his shoes, but I'm not Tony Tazza. He, and he still has a, I don't want to say easy, but a, a one of the other short ones in the antelope mm -hmm. coming up next. I don't see his cone in the back. He did move out. He did call upper 12. He's looking okay. He's looking right now through binos to see what Jeff did. Jeff shot Jeff a, 10. Shoots a 10. Okay. So Tony may just shoot at the 12, or he may go for the 14. I'm not sure. He did look over to see what Jeff did before he came to full draw. He called up or he yeah. got it. Yeah, he will have it on that angle mm -hmm. of the target. The top of that arrow is going to cut that line. Look at Billy settling Bill. in. Shooting those big silent night veins on there. He'll guide that arrow. Good 10 for Billy. Yep. 
Right. Tony's chipping away. Chipping away. Chipping away. Chipping away. All right, let's go to Bill McCall on the antelope. That'll move him to 447. Did not call upper, and he's so that's 10 points for Jamie. 441. Next up, Ray Young. Ray Young on the black bow. It's a good looking arrow. I don't think he called upper, and I think he's oh yeah, he's got that thing. There we go. 12 points. 12 for Ray Young. 436 for Ray. All right. It's a tricky little target. Mike Tyrell's notice is noting for the floor that here's the competition here. Jeff and Tony. Jeff takes a 10 on the longest target out there. Four, six, four for Jeff. Tony's going to chip a couple more away. Mm -hmm. He's going to have it within five points yeah. here. So he's trimmed eight points off that in with yeah, three twelves and Jeff yeah. shot at eight. So that, that made the eight point swing. Got it. 459. Shooting those big Easton super drives is Tony Tazza. So we've got this last arrow, Darren, and then the sixth and final arrow. And Tony put the cone out front. Do you think he's thinking 14? I don't. I think he's going to try to shoot a 12 here, but I'm, I'm curious what Jeff does. Jeff's not here for, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Jeff would shoot at this 14, but it wouldn't surprise me if he would. He's shooting the shortest target. He's known to take some chances. He's known to take some risks. You know, if he would miss in the eight ring, he still probably has the lead depending on what Tony does. But if he hits it, he would almost ensure his win. So I don't know, big arrow. I, if it was me, I would be trying to pound the 12 right here if I was Jeff. Because if you hit the 12 and Tony hits 12, you still take a five point lead into the final arrow. And that's a great place to be. Tony is just glassing, glassing, glassing. Jeff shot at the 12. I don't know what he got, but he at least got 10 points. Good strong shot from Jamie. Jamie. He did not call the upper. Mm -mm. There's Tony. Tony. All right. Tony did call upper. Yep. And oh, oh, he, he got it. 14. He shot the 14. He you went for me? it. Wow. That changes <laughs> things. <laughs> Tony Tazza, you are a beast. Bill McCall. Got you talk about another man of few words. Tony doesn't say much, but he's got one of those senses of humor. When he does say something, it's funny. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Good look at Jeff right there. I. He just got a 10. 10. There's Tony. So it's going to be wow. a one-point lead. That is crazy. Uh, uh, a 473, is that right? A 14. Yes, you're correct. Wow. Tony has a great shoot-off so far. Jeff's got to be like, what just happened? Uh, you know, at the and he really he did what he was supposed to do. Other yeah. than one arrow, kept it in the ten yeah. ring. But Tony just went after it. As Tony said in the at the last tournament, you know, he's just had a string of these seconds and thirds, and it was kind of eating at him. Yeah. Well, he's gonna he's gonna make it difficult anyway. <laughs> no doubt. Ten. Yep, Jamie did not Four, call that one. 51. Mr. Ray Young on that long hyena. Yeah, they kind of put that one in the corner. Mm -hmm. It's that's as about far a, away as they could that's get a, it. Yeah, that's as far as they could make it. <laughs> Ray's going to take a don't know. That's one of those funny ones. Yeah, it's got a real wide line there at the top. And you see how it's got it rolled over? Yeah. It's a 10. Yeah, okay. 446. Again, what Scott Parrott, director of judges out there, says he looks for is clear evidence that it is not in. Mm -hmm. And if 
if there isn't, he's going to give him the point. Doesn't want to take anything away from anybody. Waving from the crowd there. There's Jeff's center 10. Yep. Okay. Wow. Tony took, Tony took 12 points off that lead in five arrows. That's big. We have a one-point game here, Yeah, Darren. this is, I, I mean, I can't imagine how either one of them are feeling. Tony's like, man, oh, man, and Jeff's like, man, oh, man. I mean, <laughs> it really is. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, Bill McCall's going to finish in third. Jamie Drouillard's going to finish fourth. Ray Young is going to be in fifth. And we're just going to have it down to these two. Heavy hitters out yeah. here. Jeff is going to get a shoot last, but Tony can really put the pressure on depending on what he does here. Yeah. Jeff won our first event in Foley. Mm -hmm. Tony, of course, won our last one in Fort Benning. So once again, it comes down to the last two. Yeah. Last two winners. And we'll see if he can continue this good streak. Or Mr. Hopkins can defend his Jeff hasn't really, I mean, he had one, the one mistake, the eight, but he hasn't shot bad. No, he just didn't hit any rings, yeah. and Tony hit four out of five. Tony has shot great. So Tony went 12, 10, no, that's Billy. Tony went 12, 12, 10, 12, 14. <laughs> Unknown distance. Yeah. And so he shot eight up there, no, four, six, eight, he, ten up. And when Jeff shot the eight, he dropped two, so that made the 12 point difference. <laughs> That's why it's down to one point right now. And ten up in and five targets. Yeah, and Jeff shot 10, 10, 8, 10, 10. He only gave up two, so he didn't shoot bad. Tony just mashed the gas and said, Watch this, boys. <laughs> wow. The thing is, you're not going to rattle Jeff Hopkins. No. You're just not. You're not. And Tony's, Tony's cool. And Tony can put the pressure on with either ring here. If he shoots a 12, Jeff has to shoot a 12 to win. If he shoots a 14, Jeff has to shoot a 14 to win. So it's up to Tony, you know, what he wants to do. But if he hits a ring, Jeff's going to have to hit a ring to win. Tony shoots a 12, puts him at 485. He's 11 points behind. Jeff has to shoot a 12. A 10 will not help him. I know Jeff has his wife, Tara, and son, Scott, in the stands here. Tony, if his wife, Brenda, is not here, I know she's glued to the TV at home. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, Brenda Tezza has commented on the feed that she is going crazy at home watching. Brenda, your husband's got some serious game. I, I know you, you knew that, I and I don't need to reassure you of that, <laughs> but he has shot a fantastic shoot down to this point, and it's not over yet. All right, sir, if you're ready. I'm a little bit nervous. I like this. Me too. I got a little, I got, I got a little stuff going on here, and I maybe I need to go to B or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not doing, we're not doing anything. All right, here Let's we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, did he get it? That is so close. I, I don't it, know. I think it's just left. I think it is. He did it. He went for it. Wow. I mean, he had the number exactly oh, right. He did. Oh. Just left just for an eight. Left. Four, eight, wow. one. Jeff needs eight <sighs> points. Jeff needs eight points to win. He's seven points behind Tony right now. Anything, wow. anything inside the kill zone, <laughs> and Jeff will squeak out this victory. Good try there, Tony. He's going to aim center. Here we go. He's going to aim center 10 right here. Yep. Make the best shot he can make. Twelve. Eh, why not hit yeah, a twelve? Why not hit a twelve? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the way to finish it. Four eighty six. <laughs> 
Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> That's good. What? It would. I'm. It would have been really cool to see Tony make that comeback, and I'd have felt bad for Jeff. But yeah. Jeff earned this victory he yesterday. Did. Yes. Such a crazy round he shot yesterday. Yeah. That is. That was definitely a storybook weekend for him. So you wanted to see him for close sure. it out. Jeff Hopkins, we were just talking about there with the day you had yesterday. That probably ended a little tighter than you wanted. Yeah, I'm ready to go back to the farm, get on the tractor and plant some corn and <laughs> do something else. Cause <laughs> that was a little stressful out there. But good hats off to everybody. But uh, Tony shot phenomenal out here. And typical Tony. Tony usually does shoot pretty good. So. It, uh, yeah, great round yesterday and uh, held it together today. And, you know, this game's game is ups and downs and all around. So it's a fun game. But uh, that was a little annoying out there. Right there. <laughs> Jeff, what, what goes through your mind when you see Tony shoot 12, 12, 10, 12, 14? I mean, what are you thinking when that's happening out there? I've done it to him before, so <laughs> I guess it was time for him to do it to me. So. Very good. Yeah, Man, so. congrats on that round yesterday. That was world class, and yep. congrats on your win. You just you, you never you never quit impressing us. Yeah, I just got to do what you got to do and keep them in the ten ring when you have to and uh, go for it when you have to, and somehow, some way it works out. It's meant to be. Great finish to a great weekend, Jeff. Thanks, Congratulations. everybody. Congrats. Thanks. <laughs> All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have Open Pro Division coming up next here at the Civic Bossier Center at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. We will be right back. And Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. Selva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com.
number one qualifier in the women's shootdown, Sharon Wallach. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully proven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Always really good lighting here. The courses are really good besides the mud and the water. Hang on, let me put my glasses on so I look cool. Yeah, as soon as you get past this, get up on the hill where the scoreboard's at, everything that way, pretty dry. Of course, it's great. Yeah, of course, it's great. All right, welcome back everyone to the Bozier Civic Center and the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. Darren Christian Berry, Open Pro is our next division up. Take a look at that board. This one's a little bit of a different story. Chance Bobeff and Levi Morgan tied at the top at 424. Brandon Taco Reyes is what I call him at 422. <laughs> and then young Braden Jones and crowd favorite Ryan Jeffries are tied for third, you might as well say, at 420. So four points from top to bottom. You guys saw what the bonus rings can do. So let's shoot this one and see what happens. And that guy at the top there, Chance Bobuff, we're going to go back to Fort Benning to see what he did there. Very good. Wolverine for Chance got the 12. I don't know. I can't see his cone. He called up early. Chance Bobuff's ASA wind drought dated back to 2018 when he won the known pro title at London. While he mostly shot known pro the past several years, occasionally skipping over to open pro every so often, Chance started out in ASA as an open pro competitor. His last win there was back in 2015 in Metropolis. With a new Darton jersey on his back and a new Darton bow in his hand, Chance showed through the Benning Finals the confidence and rock-solid form that earned him a reputation as one of archery's most dangerous competitors. He ended the ASA victory drought and put the world on notice. He's back at the top of his game. I've been working hard all year, you know, putting in a lot of time, a lot of arrows, and uh, just seemed like one week into the next, it would always be something. But I love to see the sport grow. and. Tickled to be out here still competing with the best in the world. But, yeah, uh, everything came together this weekend. And I couldn't be couldn't be happier. All right, Darren, I can't wait to get this one started. So we're going to go right over to Nathan Brooks, and he's going to bring him out. Okay, this afternoon is moving on, and we are going to welcome the Open Pro Division your fifth place qualifier from Shepherdsville, Kentucky.
He's an engineer, and he's got more fatheads than any other archer out here. Shooting for Matthews, Ryan Jeffries. In fourth place from Smithville, Mississippi. He's one of only two shooting on the wrong side of the bow tonight. Shooting for Elite, Braden Jones. Your third place qualifier from Lynchburg, Virginia. He's the heart and soul of true ball archery. Shooting for Matthews, Brandon Reyes. In a first place tie from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, but he's always got Carolina on his mind. Shooting for Matthews, Levi Morgan. Also tied to first place from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. He's a full-time crappie fisherman and a part-time archer. Shooting for Darton, Chance. Bobeth. As you just mentioned, our first two gentlemen are dead heat tied for score and bonus rates. Yeah, Darren, so that's kind of unique. Uh, Chance and Levi tied on everything. Score, bonus rings, they're tied. Yeah, you don't see it a lot. You just don't see it a lot to shoot 40 arrows out there and come in with exact identical scores and be tied at the top. So these guys, uh, Levi was holding the umbrella for Chance during his win. They were buddies last weekend. Right now they are not buddies. They're fierce competitors. So this should be a good shoot now. Four points from top to bottom. Um, Braden Jones, I shot the pro in with him the other day. Obviously, he's shooting an elite. You know, he's on our staff. This kid's got game. He I'm does. I'm anxious to see. He shoots really, really good. It's a good look at him right there. I'm anxious to see how he judges and shoots this. This will be a great shoot off. He's not going to like where that one hit. Good look at Ryan. Ryan Jeffries, Ryan I believe. probably he. called upper. Yeah. Ryan's getting in more and more shoot offs. Yes. He's getting more and more comfortable. Exactly. And you're going to see him start chipping away at those podium finishes. Whew, that's a close one for Levi. Yeah. So, chance up first here on the antelope. 10, ten points. 10. All right. 434 now for chance. Big arrow for Levi. It's like a 12 yeah. 8 call. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. And that's literally either a 12 or an 8. That's such a tough one. Mm. I, I can't know. tell. I'm glad I don't have to call it. It's there a 12. There it is. 12, 4, 36. They are no longer tied. Good look at Brandon. Brandon works for True Ball Excel Archery and hit that black buck. Dead center in the tin ring. Dead center. Yeah, True Ball Excel is a manufacturer of different archery equipment, releases, sights, stabilizers all over the map, and they're one of the biggest supporters of archery in general. We played a good joke on them. I obviously work for a company that sells sights and releases, so we compete against each other in the industry. But I had some, like, garage sale price tags from 25 cents <laughs> up to, like, $4. And Lewis Holmes went down and started pricing all their stuff for, like, you know, $200 cheaper than what it actually is. And Brandon came down and said, what happened? <laughs> Some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> Fire sale there. I like the color of that bow Braden's yeah. got there. Liquid bronze. Liquid bronze. I think Braden shot an eight while I was telling stories right there, but yeah, he did. But a 12 for Mr. Jeffries. 432, 428 for Braden. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Ryan Jeffries just, I. The more of these shoot downs he gets in, the more comfortable mm -hmm. he gets. He can shoot. Yeah. And now he's just finding his way there at the top. Yeah. Confidence is key in this game. You know, you, you, you put in the time, you put in the practice, you can see you do it at home, but you got to prove to yourself you can do it in the heat of the moment. And sometimes it takes a little while to say, okay, I can compete. And then once you believe it, you can do it. Here's that great shot again. 
Levi on the left, Brandon Taco Reyes in the middle, and right. Braden over there on that wolf. Oh, Braden just pulled the upper. Pulled the upper cone over. Brandon's the full draw first, shooting that hyena. And that is a poke out there. Yeah, it's a long one. Oh, in the just core, under it. core line low for an eight. Levi's aiming pretty good right there, just right of that oh. 12. And Brandon, and Brandon just left of the upper for yeah. a 10. Levi, I mean, look at those arrow holes there. I'd be surprised if those arrow holes didn't, like, pull him over there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Chance called up her and there's got Chance. It. So says, we're back to tie. Yes. But first up, Ryan Jeffries takes a 10. 442. There you see one of his fat heads there to the right of <laughs> in him. the background. <laughs> his family, <laughs> his wife and kids, they have a pile of them out there. All right, Chance. There we go. Four, four, six. And now Chance Boba, multiple time Vegas champ. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just won everything. Uh, has one of the records for the most 900s in Vegas. You know, at one time, I don't know, Chance is getting older like the rest of us. Every day he gets older. But at one time, he could aim a bow better than anybody I ever witnessed in the world. He had a, We had a laser yes. at the ATA show, and there was a target like 50-some yards posted so people could test lenses and things, see the clarity. But he would draw that thing back and hold that laser and it would never leave the X. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Brandon shot an 8. Crazy. Levi shot a 10. 440 for Brandon. But yeah, he, he still aims really good. Chance is such a talented yeah. dude when it comes to bows and arrows. It's crazy. You don't win Vegas three times on luck. 10 for Brandon. 10 for Brandon. 438. All right, we're going to rotate around. Now Levi comes to that long hyena. This is where you make Back up points. Both of them 12 and that Javelinas, no small task, so they matched each other, matched each other there. Levi needs to pick this one off to, to really have an advantage, but Chance could match him as well. Yeah. Thirteen, thirteen time Levi ASA Levi. shooter of the year, I believe, Levi Morgan. Mm -hmm. Thirteen has. in a row. Well, oh, he was twelve in a row. Is that what it was? Missed one, okay. and then he came back and won the next one. My 13. bad. Yeah. Twelve in a row, and then another one later. Unbelievable. That's a tough thing to do. Be that consistent for a whole yeah, season, and to do it thirteen yes. times is like. With the talent that's out here, yeah. twelve yeah. years in a row, we'll nobody could beat him. Mm -mm. No. Insane. That's why he makes the big bucks. Yeah, and he's, I, he's going to be in the hunt for shooter of the year this oh, yeah. year as well. Because nice he won there. our first event in Foley. Just right. Give that thing a couple clicks, Levi. You got one of them fancy sights, and you've hit the exact same spot on the last two. Okay. Brady Jones. Good look at Ryan Jeffries. Good strong shot. Number Twelve was called. He did not call upper, so he was shooting at that lower. That's Braden, Braden Jones on the antelope 10, there. 10, 448. Ryan's got a close one. Just a 10. Just a little left of that pie. We call it a piece of pie right there, right in the pie. Just left of the pie. 4.52 with a 10. Good look at Chance. His stabilizer does, still doesn't move very much at all. He no. aims so good. Oh, oh, that one's close. He hit right as well. That one hurt. Maybe. I think that's an 8. I think you're right. Yeah, he didn't need that. Mm -hmm. 454. 
456 with Levi's 10, I believe. And now Chance is going to go to that long one, and Levi's going to move to a short one. Chance's shot has been so repetitive and consistent and almost um, normal over the years. The only thing I've seen him change is I think he's shooting a thumb trigger release. It's the first time I've ever seen him shoot a thumb trigger was this year. I don't, I don't know what made him switch to that, but it's obviously working. Yeah. Brandon Reyes said, let Brandon me shoot Reyes. a 14. All right. He is back in it. 452. All right. I cut him at a 454. Probably. Let's My see. math is no, that's no good. Let's you see. are correct. They'll update that. So yep. Brandon's now tied for second. Levi at 456. Chance yeah. and Brandon at 454. Ooh, the things just tightened. Jeffrey's 452 and Braden Jones at 450. Things just tightened up a little bit. Wow. So I've got the math wrong on Braden Jones. Yeah, uh, he had a 10 on that last one. He was at 450 or 440. Now he's at 450. Hmm. It's close. Wow. So now Chance is on the hyena. Levi's on the wolf. Chance on the longest, Levi's on the shortest. Good 10 for it's Chance. 10. You see that light flickering in his lens there. And his peeps oh, like, oh, he went for the 14. Whoa. Straight low. Missed it. Meanwhile, let's see what Bra right. uh, uh, Brandon off. did. Brandon Center 10. Yeah. That's big. They'll be back tied now. Yeah, they'll be tied again. 464 for Brandon Reyes. Levi's going for it, isn't he? Yeah. Hmm. 464 for Brandon. Braden Jones. 12. There we go. Nice, Braden. Moves him up 462. Ryan, uh oh, oh that just like a an little eight. bit short on that one. Yeah. Oh, it's closer than I thought, but I think it's still just under that line. Yeah, that's the, the, this target is one of the ones that really seems to have. When you get that paint crack, yeah, you know, the it's paint cracks like that. I mean, that's what it is. But so it moves him to 460. Boy, it's back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. As it is right now, everybody's going to shoot that <laughs> sixth right. arrow. Four sixty-four. I wonder if Chance so Levi. will try to fourteen that wolf when he gets over there. Yeah, Levi's going to go. Well, we're going to have a three-way tie. All right, Mr. Morgan. Four six four. Wow. Mm. <laughs> my, uh, Mike Tyrell <laughs> letting Levi know he's in the pack. So, arrow number five already. This has gone so fast. This went lightning fast. So Levi's on the antelope, which is middle distance. It's not long. It's not short. Chance is on that short wolf. Brandon is on the javelina, which both Chance and Levi 12. Mm -hmm. Braden's on the black bug. There's no way you can shoot at the 14 on it because it's the size of a peanut. There's Chance coming to full draw. Get that thumb on that barrel. Yep, now he'll just squeeze and pull. He actually relaxes his index finger. That's how he typically fires a release. Yeah, center so 10. So he got a 10. Levi's in the vicinity of 12, but he's also, it's low. 
Braden just real close on that. Watch Levi's arrow. It's it's in eight country, but I can't see exactly what he got. Ooh, maybe six o'clock. No, oh, that's not going to get there. Uh -uh. That is not going to get there. Man. Yep. Mm, 472. That's the look of. <laughs> well, there you go. That says yeah. it all right there. Oh, yeah. So, Brandon, what did he do on this center 10? Okay. Ten. No harm, no foul. 474. Four. Brandon Reyes. <coughs> Good look at Braden. That kid, he shoots such a good shot. He probably, he did call upper. Mm. Just left of it. So a 10, yeah. 472. Is everybody going to shoot this final arrow? Well, I think we are. I think it is. For sure. I think it's full house. Yep. Ryan Jeffries up next. I saw a fist bump there. He must have done something on that hyena. Did he call upper? Upper 12. He did. He did. Nice. Okay. 472. Man, well, this is. Now we have a pack. <laughs> two, two at 474, and the rest of the three at 472. And chance. Let's see how this one's going to change here. Four, seven, four. Yeah, he hit a 10. ten. Okay. Yeah. Two at 474 and three at 472. Well, this is a race. This is what we like to see, Darren Christopher. This is good because this last arrow is huge for everybody now. So everybody. shoot first. Well, with the bonus rings. Levi is at 472 and 18 bonus rings. Ryan only hit one. From my math, so he goes to 13. Braden hit another, so he goes to 14. So he said Levi is the bonus ring leader of the 72s. Taco hit one, so he's at 15. Levi would be at 18 or 19. Yeah, he's yeah. Okay, so it's going to be. It's going to be Ryan Jeffrey shooting first, yep. Braden Jones shooting second, Levi shooting third, then Brandon shooting fourth, and Chance will get to shoot last if I've got the numbers right. Wow. And this one is the open pro division. Uh, there's some big money on the line big here. Money. Big money. Yeah, yeah, like Matthew's contingency is fifteen thousand dollars alone. Yeah, so with all their stabilizers and arrows and veins and releases and sights and every piece of equipment they have on their bow that could potentially get paid for a podium spot. So you're looking at if you're shooting a Matthews, you could win twenty grand. Yeah. You know, if you're shooting I don't know what chance gets, you know, Braden know if Braden were to win, he'd be looking at fifteen, sixteen. I mean that's yeah. it's, everybody gets close to twenty grand. It's exactly it's a lot of money. And every one of these guys has a shot at it. Yeah. Two points is nothing. Yeah. Judge and distance. Scott moved him up for our last chance archery, last chance arrow. And this target, it's going to be easy for them to aim at. I think the side of the deer that we're looking at, it's been shot at a couple of times. There's some pretty easy oh, markers. See that big yeah. see that big black mark just low right of that 14? That'll be so easy to see when they're at full draw. Darren, this one is not far. This one is. Is it not? No. So they've tempted them. Yeah. They've tempted them to all go for it. This is going to look juicy when they're standing there like, man, I got to have this. This literally, any any one of these five guys could win this tournament right now. Yeah, definitely. Somebody's going to have the number right on. Somebody's going to be a little bit mm -hmm. off. Somebody's going to hit a little left. A little left. A little Somebody's right. going to hit it. Yeah. I don't think I don't think any of them. I don't think any of them lay up and shoot a 12 here. I just don't. I, you can't. But 
If you haven't finished on the podium, it's nice to cash those checks. So do you protect or do you try to win this thing? So that would be Braden, I believe, is our only non-podium finisher. I don't know that he has ever finished on a podium. I was or did he have get one last year? I was year? thinking he got... In Coleman? I know he made the shoot off it. Yeah. One, but I don't remember if we rode him contingent. I don't know if he got in the top three. Let's see what Ryan does. He is ah, straight low. He's about two and a half yards under yeah. that thing. That's, that's great concentration. Two and a half yards. I'm saying that because yeah. uh, about at 293 foot a second, every yard is about one inch at 40 yards. So when you hit about two and a half inches low one, I'm saying about two and a half yards short. So yep. he's got an eight. So Brian now, Darren, talk about that. For all these guys who got to watch him shoot, mm -hmm. they got to listen. Yeah, big right. advantage. I mean, I mean you can misjudge it. You can see it. But these guys hear enough arrows in their backyard when they're practicing and on the range. When you shoot an arrow, you can hear when the bow fires, boom, to when that arrow actually hits the target. And you can tell, hey, I, I'm, I'm in this range of 10. So it is a big advantage to not have to shoot first. Get it, kid. Got, Got it. it. <laughs> Good <laughs> shot, yeah. Braden Jones. Four. 86. Good. That's how, how you do it. How old is he? He's like 18. 18. <laughs> I mean, he's the youngest one out there. <laughs> and he's so polite. He's a he big, is. tall, young man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he calls me Mr. Christenberry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a big arrow. Good I, for his him. His dad's man. always with him, but I did yeah. not see his dad this weekend. He's here. Okay. He's here. I they figured he must be. Together. Yeah. That's big for him right there. Now he's just like, gosh, what's going to happen? What are these guys going to do? I, he did what he needed to. That's yeah. all he can do. Yeah. He can't do anymore. So now it's just to see what happened. On, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, he's got a couple of the best archers that have ever been around shooting yet, namely this guy. He knows how to hit him. He does. Got and it. There he goes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Four. Eight, six. So he takes the lead over Braden because of the bonus rings. They're tied yeah, on yeah. score. Here we go. Yep. <clears throat> this is All why right. we. This is why you want to watch these right <laughs> yes. here. This is why you want to watch the shoot downs. Right. If you don't know a lot about a lot about archery, it's probably like eh archery's on TV, but if you know this game and how hard it is to get to where these guys yeah. are and what they're doing, I have such an appreciation for good archery and what these guys yeah. represent. It's awesome to watch. I, and not guys, gals too, don't get me <laughs> yeah, wrong. Yeah. The, like we talked about Paige and Tanya and all the girls and Sharon and Cara. Golly, the level that they shoot at is just, for the normal person, it's unbelievable what they can do with a bow and arrow. Get it, Taco. Here it goes, Brandon. Ah, he hit down there where Ryan didn't did. have that number. So four, so the same eight, thing. two. Wow. <laughs> so Braden Jones just put himself on the podium. Yep. I mean, a twelve for I chance. He's tied Levi. Fourteen. He wins it. An eight. He takes second away from. Bonus. No, an eight, he would, I don't even know. I don't even know. There's so much going on right now. An eight Twelve, he ties Levi. Mm -hmm. Fourteen, he wins it. Fourteen, Boom. he wins it. Yeah, it's fourteen, he wins. It's done. Twelve, he ties Levi. It'll be broke on bonus rings. If he shoots an eight, he would shoot an 82 and would potentially fall off the podium. Might get third. Big arrow. Big arrow for Mr. Chance. I think he shoots at the 14. I think he does too. 14 to win. This guy knows how to hit him too. Just a little bit of movement, but not. Got much. it. Smoked it. Got it. <coughs> That's how you win one right there. <laughs> That's how you win one. Back to back for Chance Boba. Shooting that dart and bow. 14. Wow.
And I, we mentioned it in the last one. It had been since he won an Open Pro like 10 years. Yeah. Chance wins, they said. Levi second, and Braden did get on the podium in third place. Congrats to all That's, those yeah, guys. Yeah, that was a great shoot off. And I guess uh, Brandon finished fourth, and Ryan finishes fifth. Yep. Wow. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle too many more of those. Oh, no, that Man. was good. <laughs> my, my nerves are shot. But here comes Chance over here for back-to-back -back wins <laughs> there. How is that to go uh, out? It feels pretty stinking good, man. Uh, <laughs> I uh, had a really good weekend, you know, made some good decisions, and I just got lucky and judged the last one right. <laughs> Chance, we talk about your indoor game and all the 900s you shot at Vegas. You've won Vegas three times. You you shot known because you're so good. Um, you got a you got a talent level that's very very rare. To judge as good as you're judging, as quick as you're judging again, and I think you're playing the upper game about as good as anybody right now. I mean. What made you switch? And you're shooting a thumb trigger release. You've never done that. So there are some small changes in your game, but, man, it's working. Can you talk about that a second? Yeah, man, I, uh, I just kind of started from scratch this year. I, I made the decision that I was going to shoot open pro. And, uh, I just, honestly, I've just been putting a lot of arrows in, uh, getting used to the new equipment, and everything's working great. I, I would say congrats again back-to-back. -back. That's a great weekend, buddy. I couldn't be any happier. <laughs> congrats, Chance. Great win. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we are about to bring out the rangefinders again for our last division of the night, Known Pro at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is, it's a lot. Yeah. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully proven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. So Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Enter ten. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. And he got it. Never played it safe killing hands. The number one qualifier in the women's shoot down, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly, Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Always really good lighting here. The courses are really good besides the mud and the water. Oh goodness gracious guys. Upper. Thought you guys were nice. so scared to hit that arrow. And I probably just shot that in. Right. Welcome back folks to the Civic uh, to the Bozier Civic Center here in Minden, Louisiana. Known pro is our final division, Darren Christian Berry. What are we looking at? We're looking at a really tight race again. Curtis Broadnax at the top with 452. Brent Platt with 450. But one thing about Brent, I'll note, he hit 29 bonus rings this weekend. So he hit 29 of those little bitty 12s out of 40. He only missed it 11 times. That's awesome. Matt Burns at 450. Jimmy Lutz at 450. Remington Boyer rounding out the top five at a 448. Four points from top to bottom. As you saw, if you just watched the last shoot down, this one's far from over. These gentlemen definitely can shoot and we want to go back to Fort Benning to see how the shooting went there. Robert Householder, I'm telling you, the guy has just been shooting on fire. Yep. Well, really all year. But. In 2019 and 2020, Robert Householder was a staple on ASA podiums en route to back-to-back -back Shooter of the Year titles in what is arguably ASA's most competitive class. In 2021 and 22, he only finished on the podium one time in known pro. This year, it seems he's got that winning form back, finishing second in Foley, and heading into the Black Eagle Dart and known pro shootdown with a healthy 10-point lead. Shooting for Hoyt Archery, Robert Householder. With his family in the stands, Householder made no mistakes in the final and took his place back on top of the podium. It feels really good, man. It's uh, it's been a while since I've since I've won. It's been a, about a year and a half, maybe two years at ASA. Uh, last year it was just first man out like three or four times, and yeah. it just feels good to be in a shoot down again. Uh, Foley went well, and I'm I'm happy to pull this one out as also.
All right, we want to get to the action here as fast as possible. So Nathan Brooks, bring out our archers. The last and final event of the evening is going to be the known pro division. Folks, your fifth place qualifier, if you've ever been to Six Flags in Missouri, he's right down the road in Sullivan, Missouri, shooting for Matthews, Remington, Boyer. Your fourth place qualifier from Montello, Wisconsin, he's Danelle's husband, and he's also a world champion archer, Jimmy Lutz. Your third place qualifier from a little place in Alabama. This guy makes a living working on bows, and if it's Hoyt, he can tell you all about it. Matthew Burns. From Cranberry Township, your second place qualifier. Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, that is. Your second place qualifier, shooting for Matthews, Brent Platt. And your first place qualifier from Social Circle, Georgia. This guy, he's big time. That's what he's known as. Shooting for elite archery, Curtis Broadnax. All right, Darren, so yes, big time over there, Curtis Broadnax. He had himself quite a weekend. He's been hanging around the last tournaments, you know, in the mix, in the mix. Now he comes out there and comes into this shoot down in the lead. Yeah, Curtis is kind of hot and cold at times, but man, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't come in here in the lead in the known pro without having a great weekend. He's always in the mix. He'll shoot 120 X's in indoor nationals. He shoots a good indoor game. Curtis has got some game, and I'm anxious to see what he does with this lead right here, but he's got some heavy hitters behind him. And so, Darren, we are now in a known distance division. So they're allowed to use range finders, so we will tell folks the antelope, target one, 37 yards. The javelina, target two, 41 yards. The black buck, target three at 34 yards. That hyena there, that is the long one, 48 yards. And the wolf, 32 yards. Curtis is shooting at the antelope at 37 yards. Oh, he went for the 14 <coughs> right off the bat. We should say in known pro, these guys are going to be hunting that 14 ring. They should. They're going to know the distance. And those 37 yards and in, there, that's probably green light. It's the Javelino. That's Brent Platt there. Yeah, just, I oh, think it's wow. just, I think it's just wide. I think it is. Look at that line pulling. That's the definition of pulling the line, but. Oh, he got it. Right. He got it. Scott Parrott says 14. 14 points. We should mention, folks, it's different from TV when we there are lights, shadows cast. The perspective the camera give you, gives you is different mm -hmm. when you're down there where Scott is right up next to it. 10, 4, 60 for Brent. Good look at Matthew. So, Man, he's holding steady. He, and he, he called, called upper. upper. Yeah, yep. that's going to be right. a bonus oh. ring. 462. These guys know how to get them. So we have Curtis at a 466, Brent 460, Matt 462. And now we're coming to Jimmy Lutz, who at our first tournament in Foley, shot a record 60 up in his qualifying round. Yeah, but that's then crazy. He struggled a little bit when he came into the shoot down. And here again, he starts with an eight. Mm -hmm. Just It's a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. It's a little bit different. And I want to just give props again to the ladies and gentlemen that judge these targets, the classes we just saw. These guys are all using a range finder. They know exactly how far away these targets are. So it's a little easier to hit those rings. But when you have a skill set of being able to judge those targets like everybody else does, it's so much fun to watch. Yeah. 14 for Remington. That's Remington. That's a 462 if my math's right. Yep. So he just jumped up into second place. I would say he'll try to 14 this 
Here's our pronghorn too. Setup here. Yeah, this is such a good look. So you got Brent Platt on the left, Matthew Burns in the middle, Jimmy Lutz on the right, and their targets that they're shooting at. You All can, three have called upper. You can see on that black buck as the weekend goes by, as the arrows continue to build up in those targets, that white paint chips away. That is a nightmare to aim at. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's not so bad right there because there's you know 16, 18 arrow holes in there, but when you get 60 or 80 arrow holes in there yeah. after a weekend, it's so hard to pick a spot and say, okay, that's where I want to hit. That uh, there's some uh, there's some disadvantages to some of these targets over time. Ooh. Jimmy just smoked a Jimmy 14. Jimmy smoked it. Brent just shot a 12. And he called upper. Let's see what Matthew does. Matthew's on that long one. That's the 48-yarder. It sounds like Remington Boyer did something special down there on that pronghorn, too. I believe he had a 14. But let's take a look at Matthew Burns. He called upper. He's still holding good. Just under. 10. Good 10. All right. Yep, Remington Boyer is going to take a 14 here. There's big time. Got the 12. Yeah. All right. That'll help his cause. 14 for Remington. Wow, 476. That's so good. So good. <laughs> now, moving over to the Javelina. And. Curtis, Curtis Broadnax there. That's going to be a 12. That is 12 points. It's going to give him 478. 478. So he should still t keep the lead. Does Curtis have a known pro win? I don't know that. I don't remember. Don't put that card away, Scott. 12 for Brent, 472. Let's see. I know he got second. Yeah, at actually. At Foley a couple years ago. He says his highlight is two second place finishes in known pro. Okay, there so you go. He wants that, he wants that win. Mm -hmm. Matt Burns will take a 10, 472. Mr. Burns, 472 at 28. No, Curtis's dad, Dave, is here shooting this weekend, competing. Mm -hmm. he, I'm sure he wants to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Curtis's biggest fans or his parents. They're with him at every event. <laughs> is his mom here, too? I think I she's not. at home working. David okay, said, you need yep. to stay home and make some money this weekend. So I <laughs> yeah. think she's at home working. There's Jimmy Lutz. Jimmy got the 14. So we got he Curtis got at 478, Remington at 476, and three guys at 472, if my math is right. Boom. Yep, yep. updated on the screen. That is correct. Jimmy Lutz, as Nathan Brooks mentioned, is a world champion in world archery. Mm -hmm. He shoots the World Cup circuits for Team USA. Does very well there. No easy task to win a world championship in world archery. No. That that talent pool is ridiculous. Crazy. Every 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 archery tournament you have the best of the best there. And it's uh to win one is pretty special. All right. So we're gonna have Jimmy Lutz on the antelope, Remington on the Javelina, Curtis on the black buck. Brent, the hyena, and Matthew on the yeah. wolf. We'll start your one minute now. Good look at Curtis. There's Brent. Brent hit so many rings this weekend. He did shoot some eights, but he had enough bonus rings to keep him in the mix. 29 rings is a potential score of 58 up. He's he ended up at 50 up, so he shot four eights on the weekend, which easy to do in bad lighting conditions. Yeah, Brent's... Oh, another one for Jimmy. <laughs> That's awesome. Remington kind of. Yeah, he got the center 10. ten. Yeah, All right. he fell just under the upper. Brent as well. He center. shot the upper, hit just under it. Matt Burns had a letdown. He's got 20 seconds on the clock, plenty of time. This kid holds good. He's got a nice looking shot. Nice. Got it. 14. 14 for this Matt. This is good. All right. This is good. 
All right, Jimmy Lutz. Fourteen, four, eight, six. Four eighty six. There we go. <laughs> Remington. On the Havelina. Four, eight, six. Was a ten. ten. Yep, he fell just short of that upper, so he'll be at a four eighty six as well. Now we're gonna come over to Curtis. Yeah, just a little. Oh, Curtis, Curtis all twelve. right. Okay, Curtis, let's see if you can continue to extend your lead because he's going to basically. It's going to move him to 490. Yeah, 490. He knows. way to do it. He knows he, he knows he needs every ring. Yeah. These guys are coming in hot. So, and unless, and I'm pretty sure I'm accurate on this, but these five guys, were not the five guys who were there in Fort Benning. Completely five new guys. That's how competitive this class this is. This class is ridiculous. For Brent Black. 10 for Brent. 82. There's about, there's probably 30 guys solidly who could win this division any weekend. I think it's time to make it known pro 60. 60. 60 yards. Back them up. Yeah, back them up 10 yards. <laughs> Some of them still shoot the same scores. They'd still shoot 50 up. It's yeah. crazy. 14. There we go for Matt Burns. 486. 486. All so right. Curtis is at 490. Matt Burns, 486. Jimmy Lutz, 486. Remington Boyer, 486. And then Brent Platt, 482. Yes, my math is right. Wow. Still, that's only after three arrows. We got three more to go. We haven't really had one runaway shoot down no. tonight. It's all been tight. Yeah. Jeff's, the senior pro was the biggest spread from first to second. But, yeah. But Tony chipped away and shot four bonus rings there. And, you know, obviously Jeff ended up came winning. Came to the last yeah, arrow. Yeah, came down to the last arrow. I mean, he, he cut the lead from 13-point lead down to one at the final arrow. Yeah. So. They're all, they're all look. glassing for arrow holes, muscle definition, lines, finding something to aim at because they know exactly how far these targets are and they can set their sight to that exact distance so they can hit it if they can see it. Curtis is on the 48-yard uh, hyena, so this is the longest target. Just left Just 12. Left. That's a good 10. That's 48 yards to take it. Jimmy Lutz has been 14 hunting. Let's see what he's got here. Oh, he was going Missed for it. it. He said he was going to go for he it. He wanted it. <laughs> if he'd have hit that, that would have been huge. Yeah. That's a tiny that 14 on that Havilene. That is tiny. Oh, Matt Burns did shoot at 14. He did. I think he got the top of it, too. Here we go. That's that awesome. Way. Four. That's 500. 500. Already. God. If you break the 500 barrier at an ASA, you've done something. There's still two hours to yeah, go. They're not done yet. <laughs> Next up. Now we go to Jimmy Lutz. Mm. Look how little that 14 is that he's aiming at. Yeah. Eight points. Four, nine, four. He said he was going for it. I saw him lip to somebody. I'm going for it. Yeah. Remington on the black buck. Still shuffling. It must be a 12. Yeah. All right. Four. Nine. 98. This is so good. Curtis is going to have to shoot the 14 on this wolf. Yeah. It's the shortest one at 32 yards. 10 points. 500. Took a good poke at it. So now we have a dead heat tie at 500. If we have a correct flat there, we'll see it, how it all shakes out. Even the crowd's chewing their nails. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's on the edge of their seat. Brent 14, Platt. Four, nine, six. All right. 
so Curtis and Matt 500 Remington 498 Brent 496 Jimmy Lutz 494 I don't think Jimmy has anything to do but shoot at the 14 for and sure the 14 on the black buck is the same size as the 14 on the javelina it's tiny but I think yeah we haven't seen anybody shoot at that one mm -hmm. yet it's tiny and I think if he if he wants a chance to win he has to 14 this target yeah just for Jimmy because he's six points behind the leaders you can't go into the final arrow six points behind here's Curtis on the shortest target the wolf mm -hmm. He will more than likely shoot to 14 here. Looks pretty confident in what he's doing Does. out there. Oh, I, I think he, he got, got it. it. I believe he got I it. I think he got it. That'll help a bunch. Matt Burns is shooting that javelina. Let down. Remington shot. Remington's away. He shot the hyena. Matt's looking hard. He's shooting the javelina, so I wonder what he's up to. Brent went for the 14. I, he's in the right area, but I didn't hear a cheer. Matt's called the upper, so he's trying to shoot the upper 12 on the javelina. He's holding that bow so good. Keep working it. Nice shot. Oh, just ah, just tall. tall. Man, I want to see Brent's ar uh, arrow here because he's flat. in the right left side, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he got it. Yes. He got, got it. it. Wow. So that's 510. Yeah. 510. <laughs> That one's going to hurt. Eight for Matt. 508. Especially since Curtis hit this one, we believe. Mm -hmm. Curtis has done everything he needed to do so far. He didn't give yep. anything up, and he hit those rings. Here comes Jimmy Lutz. Did he go for it? <laughs> oh, he did. He did. That thing's so little. I think it's just Andre. Boy, they're giving a good long look at it. Wow. Ah, he's shuffling. That is so close, Darren Christenberry, man. He's gonna get, he's gonna give him the fourteen. He got it. There it is. Wow. 508. Now Remington, I yeah, I don't know what he did. He's shaking his head no. So he's a 10. Right. So he's a 508. He's at 508. Curtis is in the catbird seat he right is. here. He's going to have a four point lead over Brent. Six point lead over the rest of the field. All right, first brought next. Went into this round with a 530 bonus rings. Let's see what he comes away with here. Oh, yeah. There we go. 514. So, everybody's shooting the last arrow, mm -hmm. which isn't unusual for this division. <laughs> but. There's so much math to do on bonus <laughs> strings. I'm going to let Mike tell me how the shooting order is. James has 28 bonus rings. So we go to the final arrow. Shooting first is going to be James. Second will be. Okay, so it sounds like Jimmy Lutz will be going. Jimmy we think he's shooting first. Yeah, Jimmy will probably go first. Then Remington and Matt are tied all the way around on bonus ring. So probably Remington will go second because he was lower seated. 
Then I'm going to guess Matt's going to go. Then I'm going to say Brent Platt's going to go. And then Curtis is going to get the last arrow. That's the best guess I've got. Yeah. Wow. For our last chance, archery, last chance arrow. I hope Scott stretches this one out. I do too. I, I'd like, I'd to, like see to see him, because it's known. Yeah. I'd like to see him use. Make him earn it. They could even do the deer. I mean, it's got a standard size 14. They don't have to penalize them by using the javelina or the black buck because they are significantly smaller rings. But if they do the deer, put it out there where they got to really get after yeah. it. Yeah. You know, these guys have shot awesome. All right. Once again. If you put it at close distance, not much can change. And that's great for Curtis. That's what he's hoping for. But if you put it at distance and you make a special shot, you're going to get rewarded. And it's marked it's, up good. Yeah, it's – the hyena is the farthest. That was 48. They are shooting at an angle now. They're going to shoot this deer. It's, and, it, and it's marked up well. Yeah. I'm going to guess it's in the 40s. I might be. They, they did move them up, though. I don't know. Well, you uh, know there's this perspective, so I, I'm. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to guess that it's. Right. It might be in the 38, 39. If that hyena was 48. Yeah. They moved them up. Years closer. Short. The archer moved up. It might be in the high 30s. Watch Jimmy's bum come around here. He is a command shooter. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it mastered. He does. I just have to laugh and say that's good. Hats off to him. He's one of the ones who has Five, mastered it. 22. Looks like we got a guy shooting a 14. 522. There we go. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. All right. All right. Next up is Remington it's Boyer. far Remington from over. Boyer. Here we go. Remington Boyer. Dead tied with Matthew Burns. Yep, that was right. He needs a 14 to stay tied with James. And with Lee going to take range finder. Double checking. Remington needs a 14 to make it. I don't know if I'm nervous or if it's cold in here. I think a little of both. The air conditioner's working good, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Well, we know what Remington's going to do. He's going to shoot at it. Yeah. We just have to decide or wait and see if he's going to hit it. Each one of his arrows can be worth thousands and thousands of dollars to these gentlemen. Yeah, Mike Tyrell is mentioning right, that you ready? We'll this is thousands of dollars that these guys can make or break. Yep. Big arrows. Sure is quiet. That sounded funny. He missed. I bet he set his sight wrong. Or I bet he didn't set his sight. He looked right at his sight. Five away. Well. I, hey. bet, I bet he forgot to set his sight. Oh, that hurts. All right. Next up, Matthew Burns, mm. currently at 508 with 30 bonus rings. He needs. Hmm. Let's see if he goes over. No, yep. Yeah, went straight over. Straight over top. He, he must have missed set his sight. Yeah. He probably missed it by five yards, I'm guessing. That's Remington, don't let that get you down. I saw Jeff Hopkins do that in Foley about mm -hmm. three years ago, and he just won a big one today. So That's just one of the things. You just never know. I mean, th you got to set your sight right. you got to get the brakes. you got to draw the right order when you're out there shooting your qualifying round. you got to get a call on a close arrow in the yeah. shoot-off. There's just so much that has to go your way to win one of these yeah. tournaments. Here we got Matt Burns shooting that new Hoyt Stratus. I'm impressed with this kid's form. He holds that bow so good. Like his shirt is not even sh not even moving. <laughs> He's like a statue. I know it. That's
That's awesome. Got that bow aiming good for him. Nothing. Got Smoked it. Smoked it. Wow. When you, when you hold that steady, it makes it way easier <laughs> to hit those <laughs> rings. I mean, there's his fingers weren't moving. Nothing it. was I moving. Know it. Great shot, Matt Burns. 522 with 30 bonus rings. So he's right. he's ahead of Jimmy right now. Yep. 31 bonus, 31 rings, rings for Matt. Yep. Jimmy with 29. So, yep. So Brent Platt. A 12 will get him the head of the 522s. But he's he not shooting. No, yet. he's shooting at the 14. Has to. He's shooting at the 14. And then Curtis has had to sit there and watch everybody pound this ring in front of him, knowing what he's going to have to do. Curtis looks pretty determined this time. I think he, I think, I think he's going to take advantage of this opportunity. Let's see what Brent does. Yeah, Curtis would, would just need a ten, unless Brent hits this one. He's holding that bow pretty good too. Yeah. Got, Got it. it. Five. Twenty. Twenty-four. So. A twelve a win. Well. A 10. What, what about bonus rings? Yeah, if he shoots a 10, they're tied. Brent wins on bonus rings. Oh, Brent does. Yeah. Okay. If he shoots a 10, Brent okay. wins on bonus rings. If gotcha. he shoots a 12, he shoots a 526 and wins. If he shoots a 14, he wins. If he shoots an 8, he would be tied with Matt Burns for second. So he's got to go for the 12 because a 10 keeps him in second. I don't know. I think he goes for the 14. Wow. I think this is an all or nothing right here. You've got to hit it right. to win it because if you go to a shoot off or you're tied, you, you risk losing well, it again. Well, the 12 gets him a uh, 26. Yeah, and a 10. And a 10 gets him second place. Gets him second place. Mm -hmm. But the 14 and he misses. Yeah. Now he may fall off the podium altogether. Let's see what he does. Big Arrow Curtis. Yeah. Looks pretty steady. Yeah. Oh, I heard 12. it. Yeah, upper 12. <laughs> he had to. That was Five, a smart play. 26, and that's your winner right there. Good for him. <laughs> First win. I talk to him every time I go out there. Nice, super nice kid. Oh, yeah. He wants to win. Like you said, sometimes he's hot and cold. Yeah. It's just archery. Ah, yeah. Just That's archery. awesome to see him that get his first win there. Guys. We look forward to, uh, you your I'm excited to hear how yeah. he's feeling about this. He's getting me. We've got the cameraman coming over. Curtis has the headsets on there. Curtis, big time, first win. Known pro, how does that feel? Man, it's it's incredible, PJ. Man, I I, I can't quit shaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> how did it feel on that last arrow? You know, you had to have that 12, had to have that bonus ring, but you were crushing them all the way through. Man, it was just I, I drew back and I come down over it and it was just shaking all over it and I just <laughs> tried timing the punch right. <laughs> so. uh. Curtis, you shot solid out there in that shoot-off. You earned that win right there. I'm glad to see you do it. And the last arrow, actually on camera, your stabilizer looked pretty darn steady. So were you feeling it really bad there, knowing you had to have a 12? Yeah, well, it was pretty much the same same thing the whole time. I had the same nerves the entire time and just, I guess, shook through them, I guess. <laughs> Buddy, congratulations. I'm proud of you. I'm glad to see you get that first win. Thank you very much, Mr. Darren. Congrats, so. uh, Curtis. Great win for you. Thank you, PJ. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in to the broadcast tonight from the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am. I am PJ Riley for Darren Christian Berry, Nathan Brooks. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will be back next in London, Kentucky. See you then.